you're live. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Council, I'd like to call this committee to the whole meeting for May 11th, 2023 to order with adoption of the agenda as amended. I want to move 10A to 8A. So we're going to move the fire department quarterly report to the first item. Uh, that way we're not holding up uh, our fire chief. So if someone wants to uh, uh, second that uh, motion, please. Councilor Cherry, all in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Uh, going on to adoption of the minutes from Committee of the Whole for April 13th. Someone want to make that motion? Councilor Lusau, seconded by Councilor Cherry. All in favor? Motion's carried. Any business arising from those minutes? Seeing none, I'm going to move on to uh, 8 day. We'll move uh, uh, get uh, Chief Derose to do his presentation on his uh, orderly report. So, Chief, we'll uh, leave it up to you and uh, Ms. Rusko can share the screen, or you're going to share the screen, or however you want to do it. Uh, is this one the plugin? Yep. Try to be quick. Amazing. Perfect. That <laughs> first work in there. First try. Uh, okay, so thank you for the uh, offer to bring me up a little sooner. Let's appreciate that. Uh, pleased to present my first quarter detail report council for 2023. I uh, just wanted to go through this couple of things and, uh, and highlight anything that might be of interest. Um, starting with the fire prevention inspection division, um, one thing to note there is that we were able to achieve 100% of our intended inspections. Uh, <clears throat> and our number is, I believe it's 149 um, in the right hand side there as well. Doing well on inspections. Uh, fire investigations, we don't have numbers for the losses right at the moment. We're still waiting for the fire insurance companies to provide more detailed information. On that, um, we've had a number of uh, fire and life safety public education presentations, mostly to uh, kids, uh, but we have done some municipal building uh, fire alarms and evacuation drills on that. All right. Okay, so fire suppression division, uh, this is just our uh, target time response times. Uh, not much different than previously reported for the uh, 2022 annual report. We're still working on getting those uh, closer to the numbers that we'd like to see. Um, on the right hand side here, you can see the yellow is our numbers and uh, the orange is the target number for getting that first two apparatus on scene. Okay. Incidents, oops. Back one here. It doesn't like when I click. Okay. Uh, incidents by type and location and incident distribution. Um, I'd just like to make a correction to the Revisoke numbers. There should be 77. There should be actually three residential structure fires in there, um, uh, which were uh, two chimney fires and a, uh, a possible structure fire. Which turned out to be a barbecue on a on a deck it was called in the smoke coming from the from the eaves. Um, so called in as an actual type may be different. So there's just a little error in that. Is there an that. actual fire in the barbecue, or just somebody to know how to cook? Um, I guess they like char broiled steak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so just on the distribution there, you can see the most of the calls. Seventy two percent are in fact in Revelstoke. Uh, twenty three percent are are our calls are road rescue, and five percent are in area B fire protection area. Uh, call volume by day of the week. There has been a change to the call volume by day of week from the uh, annual stats, which we saw Wednesday had a peak on it as well, and that peak has now shifted to Monday. So it'll be very interesting to see how that uh, those peaks and valleys uh, settle down over the year. The training division. Oh, I did it again. There we go. Clicking the wrong button. Uh, training division has been quite busy. Uh, since the snow has melted, we've gotten back into our uh, wildfire 
uh, training as well. Uh, a couple of things that we've done, uh, interestingly, uh, or not interestingly for myself, uh, helicopter landing zones. Uh, so those are where we might be off by a BC ambulance to uh, set up a, an LZ on the highway or in a field or something if there's a vehicle accident. Uh, sometimes we'll get them uh, here in town as well. They'll ask for assistance for an LZ. Um, so we got to train on that to make sure that we're doing it right because the helicopter's coming in and they're they're they want to be fast too. Yeah. A volunteer firefighter recruitment attention. Um, we started the year with 26 and we've lost four already. Um, I can tell you that we've already lost an additional one uh, since this report was written as well. Um, that is a 15% decline. So I'm going to replace those four right away. I've done some interviews um, and we're intending to onboard four new recruits uh, right away, put them through a bit of a boot camp uh, to bring our numbers back. So, um, Chief, why are they leaving? Are they leaving town or um, just losing interest? Um, are they losing town, losing interest? I don't think either one of those is prevalent, actually. I think it's a, it's a matter of opportunity. Okay. Uh, we've got one fellow who's uh, still living in town, but he's taking full-time work in Salmon Arm. Uh, another guy, guy has left. He's moved to take full-time work in Belmont. Uh, and then we've got one, another one. Yeah, so it, it's not anything specific, but I think it's more opportunities. Sure. Um, more than anything. Um, we haven't had any leave for loss of interest specifically. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, in those numbers, uh, second from last line, volunteer membership uh, is below the minimum target of 24. So the minimum uh, target of 24 is that we expect 15, 50% uh, of our volunteers to show up. So that would give us 12 volunteers plus our career staff give us the 17 that we need for that structure fire. So that's where we're looking at those numbers there. Okay. Uh, because we have such a high rate of turnover, our current uh, membership is 82% with less than five years experience. So we're trying to get those numbers up again. We had a number of city staff uh, completed their uh, emergency operations center essential training. Uh, so that's great to see there. We've got two uh, staff have completed their ICS level 300 um, and one has completed their level 200. So that's good. That um, improves our capacity with the emergency program should anything significant come to the city. Yeah. Uh, doing quite well for um, injury and sickness. Uh, we don't have any anything significant there to report, so it's pretty just standard there. No concerns on that. Um, the firefighting fleet operational readiness, we had ladder six was out of service for 58.5 hours in the third, uh, first quarter. Uh, there are more hours, but they're going to fall over into the second quarter. Uh, that was a failure of a couple of hydraulic lines uh, that control the platform and um, they had failed or were about to fail. Uh, so we had to take a truck of the service to get those replaced and that took quite a bit of effort. Sure. Councilor Stickner, uh, question. quick question on that 58.5 out of service hours. Is that like consecutive hours or is that like workshop hours? Can you define that a little bit more for us? Uh, so that would be consecutive hours. Okay. Uh, so once those hydraulic lines were uh, deemed to be unsafe to operate the, the platform, the truck was kept in operation until the truck was taken out of service to get repairs. Okay. Uh, so just there were some complications with the repairs. We we're not able to get the parts in town. Um, it was uh, three pieces of hydraulic line, sorry, four pieces of hydraulic line, two each. Uh, one set was 70 some odd feet long and it's non conductive. So we had to get those from out of town, but there was a problem with those. We actually had to replace two sets. Yeah. Not to throw um, And child passenger seats. Uh, safety seats. Uh, we're trying to ramp up a little bit on the child passenger safety seat. So I'm just going to take this opportunity to inform everybody that the uh, uh, significant cause of children between the ages one and nine um, is improper use of car seats. Uh, so 81% for car seats and 50% for booster seats. Uh, so Revelstoke Fire Department uh, will check your, your child's uh, car seat and booster seat to make sure that it's installed properly. Uh, so they, your child has the best chance of surviving an accident if you do get anyone. Uh, it's free, free cost, no charge. Uh, just make an appointment at the fire department, come on down. 
Um, we did one in the first quarter. We'd like to boost that number. Sure. Councilor Strickner. Um, yeah, just a suggestion. I was wondering if we can maybe um, run that through the city communications and have that in the, in the next newsletter so that way it gets out to the public. Right. That would be a great suggestion. Appreciate that. Mr. Palmer, you have a question? No, no, it's good. Thanks. All right. And uh, Councilor Orlando. Uh, just uh, uh, just to follow up on that comment, all senior staff, including the chief, are able to access the uh, to submit to the to the newsletter automatically. So yes. anytime any department wants to include information on that, it's they're available to. Them. So we have to need a reminder to tell us <laughs> to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so we need that. Um, and if there's no further questions, um, if I may, uh, Lordship. Uh, there's an opportunity on June 3rd, so the uh, second Friday, um, late in the morning, just before lunch. Uh, one of the vendors is heading down to Penticton for the Fire Chiefs Conference, and they bring in an electric fire apparatus through town. Uh, they've offered to stop here in Revelstoke to let our firefighters get a, a handle, uh, get their hands on it, and to experience the way of the future. Uh, so I'd like to invite council, if any of council is interested, uh, Friday, June 2nd. Uh, 11 a.m. All right. Stop by the fire hall and see what it is. All right. Councillor Palmer, you have a question. Uh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the uh, report. Um, question on this. So uh, I noticed that the streams, some streams are already drying up that are normally still flowing pretty good. Or So it's wondering if it's getting dry out there. Do you do a joint training with wild, uh, what, the wildfire services? Uh, or I'm not sure. sure. How, how does that work? Not as much as we'd like to. Um, so obviously there's been some uh, challenges with uh, starting with the pandemic in 2020. And um, one of the things we'd like to do is, is see uh, an improvement in that. Um, the challenge for us is we were going to do some uh, training with Wild Park, uh, and now they're busy. Um, there's a bunch of uh, courses they were putting on, uh, fire boss courses that have been canceled because now they're they're too busy with what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gotcha. So really challenging to get a really good environment where we can actually learn something and work together. Yeah, gotcha. Right. Um, then, uh, so the wildfire services. So they're putting in a new building. It sounds like a pretty big building down by the airport right. there. Yeah, and just uh, you know, I was just thinking after uh, Tuesday's council meeting, uh, you know, the whole conversation about uh, second fire. Uh, hall and all those kind of things. So I, not, just they're just some of the thoughts. Of course, our emergency services um, uh, operations center is down in that area. And I was just wondering if there was synergies. And so it's not really a question. These are just things I was thinking about. And I, I'm not sure how much it sort of hits the radar, whether there's any synergies or if it really needs to be two separate entities. And I'm not really looking for an answer, but that's just, just a I was thinking about okay, we got more water going down there soon, and more facilities, and that's good. And yeah, so that's just yeah, just a general comment, I guess. I think there are certainly some synergies uh, and opportunities, uh, and one of the things that I'm really looking forward to is having access to uh, appropriate water flows. Uh, should anything happen on the airstrip itself, as well, we, we now we would have access. Uh, to significant water uh, rapidly for the airport. So that certainly would be a benefit. Councilor Stickers. Just uh, on that note about the airport, um, I've, I've never taken any kind of airplane firefighting rescue courses, any of that. It's a whole different kind of subtopic in itself. Um, but my understanding is that it's all kind of um, like one, a special PPE because of the, the temperatures. And then two, it's, uh, it's like a special form that you're using for, for putting out the, the jet fuel fires um so yeah just kind of wondering about like the you know if we're going to expand that you know like firefighting capabilities down at the airport and then i guess those would be two kind of considerations that i'd be looking at for for you know mitigating those types of incidents so just, yeah just, uh, just a follow-up comment there is um you know our uh service levels document our policy yeah. uh, we have stated that uh fire uh firefighting efforts for aircraft crash will be based on structural tactics at this time okay so in, unless things change at the airport we'll be continuing to use structural uh, tactics equipment and supplies so your your average uh, class a foam okay 
Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions or comments from Chief Fort Chief Duros? Seeing none. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, Council, let's move on to uh, draft Council Code of Responsible Conduct Policy C1. Ms. Ford, you have a presentation. Thank you, workshop. So um, this report is in follow-up to our March 14th meeting where we brought forward um, a request for council to consider uh, putting in a code of conduct. And council made the recommendation to um, that a code of conduct be drafted and that the working group be established with councillor Stapenhurst uh, Devlin and Mayor Sells. So after that, um, I went back to, uh, not to the drawing board necessarily, but uh, I'll give you a little bit of background here. So on March 14th, we, um, no, I already did that, sorry. In that March 14th uh, council report, there was a link to forging the path to responsible uh, conduct. And from what I understand, uh, council may not have seen that link as during the respectful workplace um, training this week that council participated in. Council wasn't familiar with that. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention again. And it I did hand it out so you guys have copies of it. Yeah, thank you. So uh, I did a matrix that I shared with the working group where I compared Abbotsford, Kamloops, Maple Ridge, Salmon Arm, and Surrey. And there either they had code of conduct policies or bylaws. Most of them were pretty consistent across the board um, in terms of the content. And most of them were um, created based on the foundations, foundational principles of responsible conduct, including integrity, respect, accountability, leadership, and collaboration. So now I would like to sit down with you guys. Is there anything that you would like to add to the, that list of principles? Or do you think this is sufficient and it covers basically what you want to see in the code of conduct? Comment from anyone? I have some questions. So um, before us, we have a draft policy, and I'm just wondering um, if, if I was to say I wanted point number five, how would that be? I, I could amend the... that okay. draft policy to include whatever you you wish to. Include. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I'm just going to go through the components of the policy, and at any time, if you would like to see something additional or something removed, please speak up. Okay. Um, so. In the foundational principles, there are definitions for each of the principles. Um, pretty common sense conduct, like for integrity, conduct under this principle upholds the public interest, is truthful. Um, respect is demonstrated when a member fosters a great environment of trust in demonstrating due regard to perspectives. Accountability. Uh, conduct under this principle is demonstrated when council uh, members individually and collectively accept responsibility. And then the leadership and collaboration conduct under this principle is demonstrated when members encourage individuals to work together in the pursuit of collective objectives. So in the policy that um, has been presented for you, there are a number under each of these categories, there are a number of specifics on how you can achieve each of these um, principles. The next section in the policy that's proposed is general conduct. Again, it refers back to this um, government document that was created by the working group. And then an important one is the roles and responsibilities. Council is a governing body of the city of Revelstoke. 
and is responsible. Stuck. Um, for governing the city in accordance with the Community Charter and Local Government Act and any other legislation. And the mayor is statutorily responsible for providing leadership to council and directing the CAO. So again, if you have any comments about any of these things, please speak up and I can amend the policy. Um, interactions with staff, this is an interesting one. And for the most part, all of the um, communities that I did the comparison with, they all have that council should direct all of the inquiries to the CAO or the director of the departments rather than staff. And then it gets filtered out that way just to ensure that all of council knows what's happening and are all on the same page and receive the same information so that when you make decisions, it can be unified. Councilor Chair. Just Thanks, Richard. Just a question on that one. For planning, sorry, planning and development, who would we, we have a director there unless we go through Mr. Black? Uh, I believe it would be Mr. Black and Paul Simon. You could include both of them. Thanks. Um, okay. Because Paul is acting on exactly. in that regard, yes. Councilor Palmer, did you have a hand? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's an interesting thing. So on the uh, on inquiries, so um, uh, Basically, so if we have an inquiry, say engineering or planning, we'll send something to Simon, CC all of council on the inquiry or not, or just so just because that that gets in, that does this doesn't address that. This, this does not address that. So that's no. just discretion by the individual. So I'll give a real example. Um, so I, I was approached by a constituent yesterday regarding. Um, a, a, what I perceive to be a planning issue. So, but I don't think it's of general interest, but that's a discretionary uh, kind of a call. So, um, you know, do I send that out? So I, I guess if that just remains discretionary. So specifically what, what it is, just as an example, uh, don't need to drill into this issue, but if someone wants to inquire about um, installing one of those neighborhood library or book mm -hmm. exchange mm -hmm. things. And I think, okay, that's just email clutter if I was to CC to everybody kind of thing. But, uh, but that's discretionary because somebody might think otherwise. It is, yes. And staff are going to work on internal policies on how communications and correspondence is disseminated through the council. Okay. We're going to try to make sure it's consistent through every department and uh, right. each of you. Right. And so, so right now what happens is you may send your inquiry if that particular staff member feels that it should go all the response should go to all the council, yeah. they'll send that out. But in this particular case, it might not have anything to do with the rest of council. Yeah. And they might say, go tell your constituents, come see us and yeah. you know, we'll put this through or whatever the case may be. Right? Yeah, exactly. Like in this case, um, and I think it's appropriate that council, to, maybe I'm drilling going off topic slightly, but I always say, go see staff. This is the appropriate staff. Uh, however, sometimes they want this uh, a feeler put out, sure. and that's kind of what I said. Well, I'll, I'll check. I'll check with the planning department because um, they think it's going to be really easy. And I sort of think, well, it might be not so easy <laughs> and frustrating, but uh, yeah. Okay, good. That's that's good. Thanks, Councilor. Long. And just, I mean, I, I welcome comment on this. This is just a general comment on my understanding of how things work. Um, like you're not meant to be by email lobbying. Uh, all of council in one email for something. So if we've got an agenda item and I want it to do all this way, I can't email everyone. It's okay if I email everyone individually and say this is an individual conversation I want you to support. So here's what I'm thinking, but uh, as a group. So I, I know I had a bit of a concern once uh, and it's good to hear that the, the procedure is going to be um, tightened up because like I, I think I emailed something to Evan and then it got sent to everyone. Uh, you know, like you know, it's not me sending it, but uh, um, just uh, it was just one of those things. So it'd be great to see that procedure. And, and the other thing, I, I did email uh, um, Evan and staff the other day, just um, hoping we can tighten out the email procedure when somebody emails council and staff for something that's kind of council, kind of staff, uh, kind of thing. It's hard to know who's responsible. Anyway, so it's off topic a bit. Just, <laughs> thanks. Just elaborate on that. Uh, are you saying it's okay to email 
specific counselors. You can lobby individual counselors for on uh, for anyone in, for any one issue. Yeah. So um, um, if I want to go talk to one person individually, then then that's okay as far as my understanding goes. Yeah. So. And the and the basis. We don't want to be perceived to be deciding by email, you know. And then, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's avoiding the meeting by email. Mm -hmm. So follow up, uh, Councilor Chair, on that one. Yeah, just for clarification on the example of the community library, there's really I don't see why that's a council issue. I mean, that's just in something like that. Wouldn't you just say, you know, go talk to this department? Um, and the reason I'm asking that is I get asked all the time at DOS about zoning setback related questions in relation to secondary suites, carriage suites. And I say across the street is all the answers. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I've, I walked, agree. I've walked people across the street last week. Yeah, I agree. Ask them. Yeah, in our, in our approach on, on, on that, I think yeah. absolutely it's always best for people in these inquiries to just go to City Hall. And, and I agree that we should direct them. Sometimes, uh, in like in this particular case, um, you know, they're, they're thinking it's going to be simple and, uh, and maybe it will be simple. And but they they don't want they don't feel comfortable going down to city hall and being thrown a big huge bureaucratic process. So they just want a sense of that. But I'll so I said I'll get a sense of it. But I said I'm not the expert and I need to talk to Paul Simon. Um, and that's the best place to go. The reason I bring this up is as counselors, we are individually liable what we tell people. If we give them the wrong information, <laughs> we are liable individually. Yeah. So consider that before expecting yourself to know everything about every procedure and every bylaw, send them to City Hall. Mm -hmm. I and mean, if they're fearful or they're a little bit nervous, I get it. There's, you know, there's no barriers in there. Yeah. I had an inquiry uh, yesterday, real early in the morning, somebody calling me and saying, oh, I've, uh, I've misplaced this director's phone, cell phone number. Can you give that to me? <laughs> And I'm going, no, I can't. Here's the office number, and somebody will be there at 8 30 to receive your call. And then uh, two hours later, the call came, and the same person called me back and said, This is my issue. Uh, so, who do I talk to? Because, you know, I want to kind of, and this was their words, kind of grease the wheels so I can get my project to go through. And they said, Well, very poor choice of words. Um, but as I mentioned two hours ago, if you follow up with this person, they'll be able to help you with the procedures that you have to go through. And that basically is, but that's kind of what we're going to be receiving or already receiving individuals. So it's just having a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then the next uh, component is the uh, component of the policy is the collection and handling of information. So the Freedom of Information and Protection. The Privacy Act. If you have any questions or concerns about information you're sharing, please reach out to Corporate Services and we can help guide you through that. Um, there's also in the policy itself, it kind of explains um, what to do. And then conflicts of interest. Um, council's decisions are expected to benefit the community as a whole and should not come with any actual or perceived personal benefit. Um, so you recruit, recuse yourself in that sense. I have an inquiry on that um, section. Uh, it's all good. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, at the same time, it's redundant to uh, what's already there. And, and one of the things I note on these policy documents, when they get really kind of unwieldy, then if they're really hard to refer to, because this, this is covered. So I, I, I'm not suggesting it needs to be stripped, but I do question the need of those uh, especially so many uh, so many words even though it's not that much i noticed that in some of our other policy it's basically verbatim out of, uh, out of the community charter and those kind of things and say well why are we sort of doing this duplication so it's just a, i guess a perspective on that right and i i think sorry um Councilor Palmer, I think that the it's like a, a description following the legislation mm -hmm. to explain it, mm -hmm. but I'm completely happy to take those last two paragraphs out if you guys think it would be cleaner and easier to understand. Uh, it's minor, but Councilor Chair. Thanks. 
like your worship. Person, I like to keep it in there. I mean, the community charter is huge. Yes. It's very difficult to find things, especially quickly. This is a 10 page document. Love that it's there. Uh, whether it's redundant or not, I think it's awesome. Is there a liability issue as far as if we didn't have it in there, that sort of thing down the road? No, there is no, there are no real rules okay. on what's contained in the code of conduct. The only legislation is that council needs to consider a code of conduct. All right, good. Thank you for that. So I just included that because of the five other committees that I looked at, they all included it. Councilor mm -hmm. Um, I was wondering if we could go back to the previous slide, Absolutely. and my question is about the very last um, sentence there, uh, personal benefit, including benefits for family or friends. Um, it's my recollection that conflict, um, uh, the wording such as in the community charter and subsequent legal uh, interpretations of that uh, is a bit more restrictive. So, for example, I don't know that friends is cons is considered in there. I could be wrong, technically, in a legal sense. And family, I think, is defined a bit more, has been defined in the courts more specifically, such as, you know, somebody you cohabitate with um, or have uh, some sort of a financial connection with. So maybe it doesn't include your... Uh, your, you know, cousin or brother or uncle. Um, so I'm seeking clarity on whether uh, this is a more expansive policy. Um, and uh, just to give a, a personal perspective, I try to be a stickler as much as possible to these. So if I, you know, if I go, oh, that guy's kind of my friend, you know, I know him from the hockey team or the, you know, whatever, uh, the club. Um, and then I'm going to be, um, um, I think, I think that that may uh, have a fund may alter fundamentally what is in the community charter. So I'm seeking some thoughts and insight into that. Uh, Councillor Orlando, so it, it was an expansion on the legislation. Again, we can take or leave that it's more the, the optics. Mm -hmm. That if you have a friend that's lobbying for a certain application, um, do you want to be one to to make a make that decision or to participate in that decision? Yeah, I think I mean, you know, no. Obviously, if it's my good buddy who's you know trying to get something that has a material benefit, but what if it's. Uh, um, uh, you know, my friends are on the softball team and they're applying for a grant uh, for uh, new bases for the, the field. And then if I'm trying to apply the letter of the law, does that mean uh, I'm not going to participate in what I think has uh, no uh, conflict in terms of benefit to me or real material things? So my concern is that it's just expanding. I'm trying to follow the rules, so the rules are yeah. set. So my concern is it's really broadening things a whole lot and it, and it puts uh, people into uh, more gray areas as well as um, um, potential for, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, legal challenge because it's more expansive than what has already been decided before the courts. So that last five, six words that are including benefits for family or friends could be altered to be more prescriptive and restrictive um, based on what the uh, legislation states. So personal benefit, you know, like you mentioned, cohabitation with someone or a personal uh, business, let's say I have a business that uh, includes a family member or, or whatever, that might be um, more restrictive to this. But what you just uh, basically talked about, someone on a ball team getting something, bases or whatever for, but that's to the benefit of the community, not for the personal benefit. So, you know, it's, it's going to be a bit of a, a gray area with that sort of thing. But if you're concerned about this, then the, the basic thing should be, we take out those last six words or alter those. And I, and so what do you guys feel regarding that, Councilor Palmer? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Souls, and thank you, uh, Councilor Orlando, on uh, the dialogue, because it's an interesting uh, 
discussion that's been around for a very, very long time. And so uh, as an example, I'll use a very real, real example. So when uh, uh, David Reagan was mayor, uh, he declared conflict of interest with a major developer in town based on this friendship kind of thing. It wasn't a real friendship though. It was it was inter interaction. So it's kind of like you and Mayor Souls interacting with RMR. Is that a friendship? And uh, and so uh, it's an it's an interesting thing. And then by expanding your uh, Mayor Souls, you're focusing on the last five words, but even the uh, the word or perceived and this idea of or perceived. Well, what is meant by perceived in the eyes of whom? Right. And so that's, I, I guess I start to sort of wonder whether this policy, going back to my earlier uh, statement, whether we want to become more restrictive uh, as far as conflict of interest than what is already out there, which is fairly restrictive already. And even if we have this policy, what is the obligation? on an individual council, so uh, someone else might have a perception of a conflict of interest. Um, and, uh, and you know, I'll go back to this library thing. You know, is that a conflict of interest? This is a friend. Yeah. And uh, so uh, the, uh, and so we, and we have people that are coming to us. So I, 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 I wonder if we're best just keeping to the first paragraph. Um, uh, essentially. Anyway, I, I, we'll sort of see where it goes, but you know, there, but I, 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 I wonder if this might be weaponized in the future because um, yeah. of the interpretation. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Could the definition uh, refer to existing legislation? Is my question. So, proceed personal benefit according to um, the charter and the whatever um, as defined in the charter or whatever. Um, Yes, Councillor Romando. So the, the first paragraph of the actual policy is the community charter addresses conflict of interest in sections 100, 101, and 104. Mm -hmm. The interpretation of these sections is a matter for the courts. However, this document provide, provides additional guidance. Okay. So I'm happy to remove those last two paragraphs and the additional guidance statement if... Uh I think I think to um, what, what Ms. Floyd says about striking the, the last sentence in the last two paragraphs, I think that carries a lot of weight because the other thing that kind of, I don't know if this is a possibility, but if the community charter changes, um, I'd rather have it written that we're following the community charter. If that changes, we're still following it as opposed to having a policy that's very descript that doesn't necessarily change with other changes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So do we want to alter this now um, just in, in deal quickly with this? Um, can we be, uh, you know, basically, as you said, that we're following the community charter and, and reword that and then we can have an, another look at that? Is that possible? Sure. Yeah. Okay. You guys okay with that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Let's, you okay with moving on? All right, so the use of social media was an interesting one. Um, when I did the review, I limited it to, to what I thought was um, relevant in that um, the, the three items or the three points that are written on the pre presentation refrain from speaking on behalf of the city or council unless expressly authorized to do so. So that would be on behalf of you as a whole. The next statement is qualify any, qualify any subjective content shared on social media with statements such as, in my opinion, just so that anybody reading your posts on social media don't think it's a collective opinion of all of council. Um, and then obviously members are responsible for the integrity of their posts, which any comments from any of your council students? Yeah, just uh, I mean, I think part of this could could you know you could easily put it in your bio that you know the opinions expressed on this page do not reflect that of the city. They're merely my personal reflections and are not to be 
interpreted as being spoken of. You know, so it's just kind of like one of those. Absolutely. You know, you, know, you know, and that's, you know, I guess it's kind of, you know, puts, it's kind of like the disclaimer statement. Um, but I don't know if that necessarily addresses any concerns that people have in regards to how they're using social media or what they're posting on it. So that's just my two thoughts. Your college council chair. Thanks, uh, Your Worship. This section terrifies me. Uh, I'll speak for somebody who may not be here as well. Who needs to read this? Um, yeah. Thanks for that addition. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my tongue for a second. Oh, I'm gonna hear it. We'll <laughs> <laughs> come back. Don't worry. Well, I, so I, think, I think we had, I think we unfortunately had some terrible examples of how this can go wrong with previous council. Um, although it did a really good job of getting communication and the word out of what's happening in council to the to the community, uh, a lot of the posts, you know, spiraled downhill pretty quick, uh, and and we did have a council member quit before. So, yeah. I no, won't we'll go into that zone, but uh, the so I I, I kind of like how it's written personally, because uh, there there is a political component here. So if if we decide to be active on social media, so you're somewhat active, and uh, Councillor Devlin's uh, active and expresses opinions from time to time, and I think it's pretty clear to me anyway that it's opinion. But this would provide clarity as to making sure there's no confusion. This in my opinion. Um, it's it's an interesting thing. Like the main reason I, I contemplate going giving opinions very frequently. I, I contemplate it very frequently. I, I don't because it's this hole that you go down into, and you got to it consumes like eight or sixteen hours of work as soon as you you know provide that. And so that's just a decision from an individual counselor if you want to get into the community debate. So uh, and it can it can be a big issue. Like say. If, if we if it had opinions on on arena um, uh, re replacement, I do have opinions, but if I'm going to go into that realm, that may lack wisdom, uh, if nothing else. But can you curtail the individual sort of political perspective uh, that somebody might have? Um, yeah, just to follow up on that. My opinion about the arena that I wrote down months ago came back to me in the gym today. Yeah, yeah, it's there forever. Yeah, I yeah. was uh, reminded that I need to soften my language when talking to the public. Uh, just, just as clarification, everything done prior to this being adopted. <laughs> okay. okay. Still stands, but you, you can't be held. You know, you can't be. You can't be held to the fire. Is that correct? No. Good. And the intent of this section is mostly to be respectful. Try. So I'm going to go to uh, Councillor Orlando. You had your hand up on Councillor Stevens. Uh, your Worship, thank you. Uh, my uh, input <clears throat> is, um, yeah, I don't mind the intent of this, but I would prefer to see wording um, that uh, uh, conforms a bit more to reality in, the, uh, in that it was two points. Um, like saying, my, in my opinion, is fine, but often the reality is you get, for example, on social media, you can get into an ongoing conversation. You can't on every... They go in my opinion. Um, um, so there's still a bit of flexibility. And then the second part it says to ensure that there is no confusion um, between the city. You can never know what other people are confused about. Yeah. You know, they yeah. just don't know that if a lot of people for 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 a significant proportion of people, there there is no distinction between the city or council. Um, so uh, and uh, yeah, so maybe just worded a little differently uh, to try to uh, prevent confusion <laughs> or something yeah, like that. Yeah. 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 Councilor Stapler? Yes, just to, just to follow up to what Councilor Cherry was saying about expressing your opinions on social media, um, it can be, I think it can be like a slippery slope, especially when um, we're supposed to be coming into the table with kind of like an open mindset. And if, if, you know, if I was to arbitrarily like take an example, just, um, you know, say for example, I sell out in downtown. You know, well, I'm, you know, I'm dead against, you know, any kind of commercial entities coming downtown. Well, I'm not really coming to the table with an open discussion. Like if I share that on social media, it's showing right there, you know, and then if it doesn't go to their vote, then, you know, 
your liability, your, you know, and I think the integrity of, of council is kind of jeopardized at that point. So it's, it's a little bit of a slippery slope and I can understand like, you know, I think it's just, you know, maybe there needs to be more social media awareness training and, and how, you know, like the pitfalls that they can get you. Well, and I think, um, so when we were down at LGLA and, uh, and Jan, you know, did that little hour thing, it was, some of you came away going like, holy crap. And uh, some of us looked at it and go, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, and, and I think we all said, okay, that makes sense. So it's always going to be subjective. And, you know, as Councilor Lanners just indicated, you know, it, people may get confused and, and, and there's no, for most people, there's no def definition between your personal life now and your council life. Yeah. So it's how we approach that. Councillor Palmer, did you have your hand up? Yeah, it's, it's a good discussion that, you know, where this goes. I think we'll just continue, to, uh, you know, talking about the slippery slope, uh, uh, living in the age of social media is a slippery slope. And, uh, so that it, it, and the confusion, I think, Councillor Orlando, you're absolutely right. There is, uh, you know, even when there's debate that's happening, I think those that are on, on there saying, you know, I've done certainly done it saying, make sure you put your comments on top of Revelstoke, but people don't. They continue and think they're being heard because of the dialogue. And that's where the bulk of that. And um, it, I think that's a, an interesting thing because as an individual counselor, when I see that debate, even though it's not going on the official platform, I think it's relevant. Um, even though it hasn't gone because it is it is a big part of the community. Yeah. Um, just a, a, another sort of point though, just thinking a, a little bit is uh, the, the component social media should not be used for the purpose includes the distribution, distribution and your points, they're all relevant. They're, they're all basically covered under other legislation. And I it's probably a good thing to have in here as a reminder, yeah. uh, because if you do any of these things, you, you may be subject to prosecution in the in the future um, uh, with with or without this policy. You can't do these things. You can't do disparaging comments or slander. Um, so promotion of the illegal activity. Uh, that's uh, yeah. So it's probably probably not. So basically, what's here now? What are two small changes that you've already reported? Are you as a council okay to move on? You're okay with you know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, interactions. Uh, you want to discuss this? So interactions with the public and media. Um, this statement is pretty consistent throughout all of the bylaws and uh, policies that I reviewed. Regardless of whether members agree with the decision of council, they will act respectfully and communicate accurately when discussing the decision with the public and or media. So it is a council decision not an individual council decision is the premise. Can you can you elaborate on, on what exactly you're, you're implying with that statement? Like, let, 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 me, let me let me rephrase that statement. So if, for example, I didn't agree with the council decision, it's perfectly OK for me to go to the media and say, council decided on this as council. I may not be, I didn't vote in favor of it for these reasons, like that's. You have to own the decision of council collectively. I think that you, you can make a statement that you disagreed, mm -hmm. but you still have to support the decision. Fair. Good. Councilor Orlando. I think Councilor Palmer was. Okay, oh, Councilor Palmer. Sorry. Neither one of you, one of you made. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. And uh, it's an in interesting uh, uh, sort of spot. I think um, uh, my, my, so I think Cindy and I have slightly different perspectives. So I'm probably more in the zone of, uh, of Tim in that. Uh, so, for example, I'll give the real life example. Uh, this council made a decision to put in a water line uh, to service. Uh, it's my opinion that that it's, I disagree with the decision. I res absolutely respect the decision and we move ahead. So I shouldn't be trying to undermine the decision. But at the same time, I, as an individual counselor and what I, 
perceive as uh, you know making responsible decisions, I still have that ability to say uh, you know that if I so chose to say okay, I I think that was a the wrong decision. Uh, I have to be careful in the social media thing, so I shouldn't be undermining. I agree with that, but to say that I own that decision, I I can't go that far because I disagreed with that decision. And so, and I, I'm using a real. I'm trying to use a, you know it's a yeah. little bit heated at the time. So, uh, in in um, I I I'm fine with the wording as it is here. Uh, you know, act respectfully and communicate accurately. Um, I, I absolutely agree with that. But also, I would say I still have a free voice as an individual. Um, and uh, that's one of the delights of being a politician instead of a bureaucrat is like a voice. Yeah, and so, and I don't necessarily disagree with what you're saying. I think the, the intention of is is to as you use that word to not undermine that decision you know you voted against it you had your reasons for voting against it your mind hasn't been changed on that sort of thing you're going to discuss that with your constituents in whatever capacity mm -hmm. but when you come to the point of undermining it then you cross that line and that goes around the table for all of us on any mm -hmm. decision and what i mean by cross the line is if it gets out to the public where you're now promoting your decision against that, then you've gone against counsel. Is that is that a concern? Yeah. And that's yeah. that's why I'm just bringing it up for discussion. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good point, uh, Gary, because it, it's a gray it's a gray area. Because yeah. uh, in, in, in when we look at politics in general, just in the world, I mean, it's pretty ugly, especially down south of the border and that kind yeah. of thing. Hopefully, we never get to that point. But at the same time, there is politics, and then you know when you go into an election as to issues and what gets high highlighted. Um, if if I'm, I I would say on that decision, uh, it, you know, there's already there's already decisions that we've made even in this term that have been turned over. You know, so that, you know this sort of respect, and then does a person lobby to try and change the course of direction? And where is that appropriate and where is it not appropriate? Uh, in this water line, I say, okay, we move on. I have carried on considers, but we move on. And um, so it's a, it's an, I think there's probably, there's, I think there's probably a big gray area in, sure. in that zone. Councilor Lynn. Yeah, just um, thank you. My thought was, um, I don't read what you guys are saying in that. So that was my thing. And, and okay, I, right. Yeah. You, give us your yeah. <laughs> um, So yeah. uh, just my thought is, for example, if there's a big issue and, uh, you know, it uh, doesn't go my way uh, the way I would prefer it to, um, I, 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 am, I feel I'm free to say so. You know, and I and I can do that without undermining counsel. Like you know, I can say, yeah, I thought that was a bad decision. I think it's going to hurt us uh, long term. Uh, it's just wrong direction. You know, that's why I didn't vote for it. Uh, and that's my opinion. I don't understand how that's undermining a decision making process. And 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 conversely, um, ish, I can't go out there and say. I thought I think it was great, you know, like, yeah. like I, that, that makes no sense, you know, to me. So I just, and that's my main point is I do in that last uh, section I, I don't read that in there. So I don't really interpret it to mean that. So, uh, so are you guys okay with how this well, I'm, well, I'm okay yeah. with the way it's, way it's written. Yeah. I mean, there's, so act respectfully and communicate. Yeah. You, yeah. Know, you might think how I react or is disrespectful and I might disagree with you on what's respectful and what's not disrespectful. And how can you define to that that ability without a dictatorship? It's impossible, I would say. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. Okay. You're okay with that? Everybody's okay with that? Let's move on. All right. So Jane again is part of the community charter, gifts of per personal benefits. Um, they address the sections address the receipt and recording of gifts and personal benefits for members and the consequences of contravention. So in the community charter, again, the majority of the policies that I reviewed did have contain a statement on this. So when we, and I'll just touch on this briefly, when we talk about gifts, we're talking, you know, somebody comes in and gives a 
gift of less than a dollar value sort of thing. You know, we'd have to look at those kind of as a one off sort of thing. If somebody says, well, the council made a decision and everybody gets a new Aston Martin car, uh, then no problem. Right. And so that's kind of what I'm talking about or asking about is that. Is there a monetary value on it or does it come down to uh, it could be cookies or, you know, helping someone with something? And that's why I'm asking about that. How do we define that? Thanks, Your Worship. So I think it's more if, let's say there's an applicant and they bring you a bottle of wine before council has heard their their application. Oh, yeah, okay. that makes so sense. it's if they if that gift could be perceived as swaying your vote. Promise is thanks. The problem is it's not all clearly defined here. I mean, my issue with this is it affects my gaming ability. <laughs> Every, everything in here, just again, going on dates is kind of affected by this. Going they pay. If they pay. But Wow. Yeah, but then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, so the issue is, are they are they taking you out for dinner because they want something from council? Yeah, I know. Right? I need to figure that out too. Yeah, <laughs> council plumber. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's, a, it's an interesting one. Again, uh, in <laughs> gen, in general, there's it's in the community. It's covered in the community ch chart. Mm -hmm. I I think. Uh, there maybe is a separate policy item that we should be discussing on gifts specifically rather than code of conduct. Um, and yeah, I think there are so many gray areas. So, for example, say if you go to Silga and you will win a gift basket that's right. worth more than $100. And, 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 the, and it's, no, it, it would be kind of a ridiculous thing, but I think possibly to the letter of the law, uh, you know, because that's a gift from a particular entity. In this case, it's or or the or the the draw from the vendors. So you win a whatever the thing on a draw is that a gift? Um, and if I could take personalize it a little bit more, left here, I, you know, I was a critic uh, more by circumstance of the RMR smooth session, and uh, and yet when when do you, you know? Does it get down to again? I'll use the David Raven and Steve Platt thing. Like they would, they wouldn't even pay for a coffee. Like it's kind of gets to kind of a ridiculous spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so having that definition, I think, would be helpful because you talk about the, the developer with the bottle of wine, right. and you know, did that occur? Did it not occur? And what's the influence? And the reality is in 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 advertising you know a pen as harmless as it is it, it, that's where it starts like in the shoulder commission in quebec i'm not familiar but it's a big huge blow up and how, how long did when does when does it cross over into court uh, into corruption and that kind of thing so anyway, i'm kind of rambling on uh, on various things but okay councilor did you have a uh, uh your worship um no, not really, other than um, I just wouldn't, you know, I sort of think a cup of coffee is, the, you know, the, the, the limit there. And I'm pretty, um, um, uh, I think it's incumbent to, on everyone to be careful about that because, you know, it's the it's the attempt to schmooze uh, at the start or something. But there there is also lots of ways to remedy it. So, like, you know, one of the things is it can be awkward, you know, they're like, oh, you know, come to the meeting and look at the spread, you know, um, uh, <laughs> you know, um, so you got to, you know, so you can, you know, talk to the CEO right away the next day and say, look, it would be really embarrassing for me to sit there while everyone's eating and not eat. But, you know, I want to show you that I've, you know, paid, uh, you know, for this or something like that, or even the need to communicate ahead of time and just be like, hey, you know, careful here. We're not, you know, gonna, you know, I'm meeting you in here, but, you know, we're not, you know, buying me things or doing that kind of stuff. So make some effort. But yeah, not really a, a huge com comment on uh, what is laid out. So, the, the legislation is a hundred dollars. It's a hundred dollars. Is that correct? I believe it is. There is a statement in the policy that is um, members should avoid situations that result in the receipt of a gift or personal benefit that could reasonably be viewed as a real or perceived conflict of interest. 
That's so right. it is a gift that that could affect a decision that you make. So you guys okay with leaving this in there the way it is? Yeah, so I'm, I'm fine. I think it's unnecessary. I do think giving the, uh, the personal gift policy yeah. at some point, I don't think it's urgent uh, to clarify, you know, where where that the line is so that there's at least some sort of idea and whether it's in how that applies to staff. Maybe it's very similar. I it's not how that applies to staff. And so I just I, I want to address this, uh, Councilor Cherry, from your perspective. And when we're talking about your personal life, things that are going on in your personal life, that's your personal life, right? Um, versus um, someone basically saying, "Well, I I want to uh, have dinner with you because uh, I want I want you to put something forward for me or whatever." You'll know what that. Means. Is. But with your personal life, you're dating someone and you can get someone to pay the bill for you and still get to go up with you the second time. You know, you might be you might be lucky there. So. Uh, strategic. Thanks for the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't had any interactions turn. You would just be in a position of conflict with them. So if they had something before council, then you would have to recuse yourself. You know? yeah, for the, everybody does pick our brain, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not just me. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, yeah, it's everybody. Everybody goes through yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. 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 Any opportunity they have, you know, if it's over, if it's a burger, if it's whatever, say pints after volleyball, people try to pick your brain because they don't watch these meetings very often or refuse to go through the agenda for some reason. Um, but yeah, just trying not to cause an issue. Yeah, no, and I, and I think I think you've got a good grasp on that sort of thing. So well, the gift basket's here trying through me. <laughs> I, think yeah. I, think, I think he did that on purpose, right? I'm sure with can't, can't can't talk some, to some, sure some people either. just cleaned up and those things and others went without them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was in that gift basket. Just a bunch of golf stuff, jazz tickets. <laughs> good. Uh, it depends I don't which know. one. <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, item three. Okay, so breaches, complaints, and discipline. Um, basically, we are looking for all of you to agree to abide by the code of conduct um, and try to resolve any disputes in good faith before they require uh, intervention. Um, we would like to encourage council members to per per pursue the informal complaint process or procedure which uh, try to remedy the conduct um, personally before there's a big formal investigation. Have, have enough respect with your, with your uh, fellow council members that you can address them and have a, a conversation to try to change behaviors. Any comments uh, from council? Council Chair? Yeah, I think this serves as a great reminder to stop with the potential bickering or you know, verbal jabs that have been thrown at the table at people over the last seven months. So I'm in favor of it. Any other comments? Yeah, so yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one again. Uh, so advising the other members. So uh, sometimes uh, uh, our, our debate can get heated or passionate here. And then if it, if it, um, tilts over into a, an area that's getting borderline or tilting past, you know, acceptable behavior. I think we, we all own responsibility individually say, no, we need to stop. Because sometimes if we're in the, the debate, we may not be cognizant and really are counting on our fellow counselors to have our back kind yeah. of thing and say, okay, no, it's time, time, time out here. Um, so I think we all wear that responsibility. Of course, the chair has more, but, uh, um, yeah, so I think it's fair. Good. I appreciate that comment. Uh, any other comments from council? Councilor Lynn? Uh, yeah, just uh, in general, um, I think the stuff that gets us into trouble, especially interactions with people, is more in the realm of psychology and structure of communication, uh, uh, tools or whatever. Um, so um, I just would you know recommend, for example, being mindful of 
getting in, in, in a mud wrestling match with somebody uh, over something, you know, like that old meme they had, like, oh my God, someone's wrong on the internet. I gotta, I gotta be there, you know? Um, you know, uh, and trying to just be mindful that that's part of human psychology to want to, you know, oh my God, you, you know what you're talking about, you know? And then that's just doesn't lead anywhere. So just uh, take a deep breath and uh, try and strategize about uh, what's gonna be good for you, what's gonna be good for everyone, so. All right, thank you for that. So, uh, Cindy, we're back to um, the recommendation here. Yes. Is, uh, do you want to discuss that? Well, so so we're looking for a recommendation from Committee of the Whole to Council for May 23rd, um, based on discussions just now. Um, number two would be the appropriate uh, recommendation to make. And that the council uh, code of conduct or responsible conduct be approved with the amendments as discussed today. So um, those were um, changing the wording to the social media to try to prevent the um, any confusion. Is that, is, it, is that ensure that there is a yeah. which which you can't do? Also, the perceived conflict. Uh, oh, and the conflict of interest. Yeah, there's some words, yeah. I think. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. we will make all the changes that we discussed today. Know. Bring it to council on the 23rd. You can have a final look at it and choose whether or not council wants to adopt it. So, uh, just a comment on that and then a question. Uh, um, I guess you're both questions. Uh, on that, perhaps maybe circulate a, a track changes document in advance of the uh, 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 the agenda the agenda package, so we can see that just in case there's any sort of further For sure. thoughts. Yeah. Uh, the other is we we didn't discuss the um, uh, complaint handling, and I did have a question on that. So we have six months of the last last event, and I always get concerned about these things. The timeline straight, you know, was there was that just basically modeled after the other ones? It was, yes. Because it, it, certainly my preference would be a shorter period of time, you know, because if you're not addressing this stuff in a timely manner, right? Then, um, so I, I you know, intuitively, I like to say like one month, but you know, whether it's three months or maybe it, it can stay at the six months, but it just seems okay. I, I would have formal or informal. I would, I would, I would second what what uh, Councilor Palmer has said. I think, uh, I think the six months could be. You know, I, I mean, I can barely remember what I did yesterday. Um, so if you if you called me out of my action six months ago, I wouldn't even know who you're talking about. Yeah, and and I don't disagree with that sort of thing as well. Thinking that you know a shorter time, maybe two months, mm -hmm. um, would be more more prudent. But how do you guys feel on the council chair? Do you end up making uh, uh, Is this in relation to handling a complaint or formal, formal complaints? Yeah. So I saw thirty days. Uh, no, it's it's six months, then 30 days it's after this, so you don't have to complain for half a year. All right, uh, if, if we're going to change that, can there be a clause that triggers, uh, you know, say up to six months? For example, let's say we let something slide, pass the timeline, and then it happens again and opens the door to the first one? Well, that's a second that's a uh, that so that 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 complaint, but it's based on the first one. So the first that would be out to me. Yeah. But if it happened again, you know, the goal is, you know, we all tend to let things go once or twice, hoping they won't happen again. And then if they do, yeah. Council Palmer, you want to lay in on that? Point? Yeah. Yeah. So first of all, this is after the last alleged breach. So you don't have to. Okay. So it's, so the, it can be retroactive years, quite frankly, if it's an ongoing behavior. That's what uh, I'm And so, but uh, you know, my preference is to have a short, shorter timeline. But it could also be say, okay, within thirty days, I preferably within thirty days, but in no circumstances more than six months of the last, um, so that it's encouraged. It's just a, a thought, you know. In, that's actually pretty decent. That you guys all feel comfortable with that sort of scenario. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. I just my goal isn't to weaponize this. It's to you know, stop an action that's becoming calm. So it doesn't become habit. Yes. Yeah. But everybody's going to let the first one or two go, and it's not going to continue. And then, yeah. 
That's what we said. Yeah, you know. Um, it's kind of got covered with everybody else. Um, yeah, I think a shorter timeline makes more sense because the longer we let these things through, the harder it's going to be to actually come to resolution. Sure. So let's let's change that. Can we send me to thirty days and then not no more than six months yeah. for sure? Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, anything else on on that? Um, I know we covered the responsible corner. Um, so we want to go back to um, if we can have a recommendation, that would be great. Uh, I'll on. make the motion for number two. Uh, SC. Okay. Stated so with, so, the, with the amendments, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that basically says the uh, council code of responsible conduct be approved of the following amendments as mentioned. And now, once approved, all council members sign the code of responsible conduct attestation appendix A. And um, so, basically, my comment, uh, I think, when we were going through this, Cindy, was that we verbally state that in front of our peers, we're in front of you, and then sign that attestation. So any comment from council on that? Uh, I guess I better get a seconder for that motion. So I want to second that uh, that motion about uh, uh, what Councilor Palmer just put forward. Councilor Orlando. All right, now any further discussion on that? I, I circumvented that basically by saying, hey, I stated further that that's not in the motion. It's just a, an opinion that I have. Any further comments on on the uh, motion going forward to council? Seeing now, call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? No, motion's carried. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate that. Let's move on to electronic meeting policy. So this one here is uh, just to formalize our electronic meeting meetings. Um, in June of 2021, kind of on the heels of COVID, there was Bill 10 from the Municipal Affairs that um, made changes to the community charter allowing for electronic meetings to occur. Um, it was in the legislation prior, but it was only for special meetings. So this came, kind of came across the board. In October of 21, uh, we amended the council procedure bylaw to allow for this. Um, and then, so basically this is just to formalize a way so that staff and council are all participating in uh, electronic meetings in the same fashion. Again, this was reviewed through um, with other electronic meeting um, policies around municipalities around BC. So there's kind of two different parts here. Electronic meeting is a meeting where all members of council participate electronically, whereas electronic participation is a meeting where some members participate electronically. Um, and so again, the draft policy components general, um, the idea is to arrive 10 minutes early if you are participating electronically to make sure all of your equipment is functioning, that your um, video is working, your sound is working. Uh, we would like to have the screen names reflect your actual names. Um, because if you had Matt on there, the, the, no, 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 but the, <laughs> the community might not know that you're Councillor Cherry, so it's kind of important that way. Um, it's very important not to share meeting links because Jolene manages that and we don't want to have any pirating of the, um, of the meetings. We also would like participation in an area free from distractions. So perhaps not in a vehicle with other people in the vehicle. And it would be great if you could inform the chair prior to leaving a meeting if you need to depart early. So that's the general. Um, video, council members should have their cameras on at all times, unless there's a weak signal, in which case I believe you should um, 
touch base with the chair to advise him that there may be an issue with your video. Uh, public and staff will have their cameras off at all times and turn them on only when speaking. And that way, um, the public that is watching have more of an opportunity to view council themselves. Um, this mostly is for staff, but again, the screen share, we should only do that when presenting and end immediately upon completion. That way, the public can see how you're interacting with each other rather than just seeing what's on, up on the screen like is right now. Um, audio, we would like anybody participating electronically to mute their microphones unless they're speaking. And you can raise your hand to alert the chair that of your desire to speak, either in person or with the little raise hand. I believe the chair watches for both of those. Uh, voting, um, council members will physically raise their hands and uh, the chair will announce the results of the vote, whether it was carried or defeated. Um, if you are unable to physically raise your hand, I believe in the past, Council Palmer has said aye or nay. Yep. So as long as you are very clear on what your vote is. Uh, conflict of interest. So if you're participating electronically con conflict and you have a conflict, we'd like you to state your conflict um, in general terms. And then staff will remove you from the electronic meeting and then they'll readmit you once that item has been completed. That hasn't happened to us yet. Uh, yes, it has. Yes, it has. For yeah. conflicts? Yeah, electronically? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't recall that. And you just disappeared. Can no, we let you go? Yeah. I'd set. You remember? I mean, unless we're having a Mandela moment. Yeah. So, does anybody have any comments? Would you like to see something different um, happen with this? It just makes it a lot easier for corporate staff if everybody's doing the same thing because we need to um, note in the minutes when somebody comes, when they leave, when they, and it's too hard to manage. All of the things at once without having a specific policy to follow. Council Palmer, Council Stickers, Council Um. Uh. Yeah. Th thank you for putting it together, and certainly appreciate uh, the understanding of the, the merits behind this. And I'm not opposed to any components. But I'll just make a couple of comments as a person, as a councillor or participant. Well, actually, first a question. So. This is in general is for electronic participation, not electronic meetings as such. That's correct. So it doesn't address the electronic meetings per se. No, that will be a further discussion on the council procedure right. bylaw. Okay, so you might, uh, I think that's, I think it's probably stated well enough because it says in the policy directive, you might want to be explicit on the electronic meeting if it's gonna be addressed somewhere else. Because at first I was thinking this was applying to electronic meetings as well. Kind of a minor thing, but just to take a look at that. Um, so a, a couple observations uh, from the participant side. Um, one of the things on that I've noted, like even right now, I'm not sure how we're being viewed or if I was electronically at this meeting, we sometimes become larger than life. So if I was speaking, suddenly I'm on the entire entire screen. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I've been one of those people that have that turned off the camera uh, for a couple of reasons, but one is that sort of larger than life kind of aspect. So, yeah, and um, uh, especially if I'm not active, it just, I, I feel that the part people that are viewing it, there's too much, uh, analytics of me as an individual counselor. So um, if I'm on all the time. So that was part of the reason for me to turn off the camera. Mm -hmm. um, the um, just a, a comment on the voting um, in the hands up. So on the voting, I think this one's pretty straightforward. So by raising your hands, I, the, the reality is if we don't vote, what's in the affirmative anyway. So um, if it's not caught and then if, if for some reason there's an error, it's just a point of order saying, no, I voted against or, or for this. Um, the, uh, so, and then the other observation is on the raising of hands. I've tried to use the raising of the election. And it, it, 
uh, it's, I think, probably a challenge for the chair, but there's been some meetings where it's you know, quite a few times it's not, I'm not acknowledged, and then I just let it, just let it go. Now, again, I can do point of order or whatever, but it's a, it's a challenge of, uh, you know, the raising the hands or the electronic. I don't know if there's an answer to that other than uh, the, the point of order um, aspect. But yeah, so that, that, I think that's my comments. I'm fine with the way it is. Uh, Councilor Stegman. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, just to echo what uh, Councilor Palmer has said, I, did, I also find that um, you know, turning off your camera can be can be advantageous, especially if like, you know, you've done your best to try to put yourself in like a in a good situation, but you know, ultimately maybe the background is distracting or or whatever. And especially if you have like you know an earpiece in, I personally, you know, I would rather just turn off the camera than you know have everybody see the environment that I'm in. So those are just my two thoughts. But otherwise, I'm in support of it. So what do we do with, and I'll just ask this question when we do a vote, um, do you want to turn your camera back on for a vote? You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so so two things happen. So I'll, I'll just go to kind of what we do at CSRD or what's, they make me, keep, if I'm not there, make me keep my camera on to make sure my presence is known, right? Um, if the internet is terrible, then of course, um, switch the camera off and two or three of them on there, depending on where they are, that, that the internet may not be good. But then when we go to vote, it's either turn the camera on or make sure that they know that one's present. So it, it may be not cut and dry, but that sort of thing. So, Councilor Orlando. Uh, I worship. Thank you. Um, so I have two things. The first part is just more technical stuff, and it was actually addressed uh, in the conversation. So. Um, my thought is, yeah, and I've had experience of managing like large classrooms, mixed classrooms with half in class, half at home, uh, sometimes and it gets really hard <laughs> right away um, and you miss things. So I'm wondering if there's not a technological solution to those things. So, for example, zooming in on one person like the, the view we have now, um, do we have like a Brady Bunch view where we could all be like in little panels and turn it on? Or, and then the other thing about people putting up their hand and missing it, it can be hard to like uh, see that because you're focusing on other things. So is that something that staff who are running the uh, uh, thing could do or is there some sort of a prioritized function that we're just not using this within Zoom or whatever, where it uh, you know puts things in an order or like something like that. I think there might be those functions there. So it might just be a matter of coordinating that. Um, so that's just an observation. Um, my main question is, and I emailed Cindy just because I just to, just to let her know that I was a bit confused about uh, everything. There's existing policies already, and I'm just not sure how this all fits together with the existing participation policy. There's like a maximum 25%, or you're only allowed to miss so many meetings. I just don't know how all these work together. So, yeah. Thanks, Councillor Orlando. So, um, there isn't a policy on the 25% that is in the council procedure bylaw. Okay. And we are going to discuss this following whether or not you guys want to tweak that or not. So it's kind of a next, this, this is just how you participate. It's not setting up rules on how often you part can participate electronically. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I had to just squeak out. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> So this is just the just what's written here, and any extra rules are to be considered separately, like on the next agenda. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Councilor Cherry, then Councilor Palmer. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, kind of feel like a lot of these are directed towards me and some of the meetings I attended. Uh, no, 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 no. There's they all feel that way. No, it's okay. <laughs> There's been times where I've been, like I've had, for example, I've had a bunch of funerals I've had to go to over the last six months, a ridiculous amount. So there's been times where flight gets canceled in Kelowna. I got to drive to Vancouver. I don't want to miss the meeting. Um, you know, I think the one time I stopped at Starbucks and then I had to leave or else I wouldn't have made the next flight anyways. Uh, love to be able to turn the camera off, especially because Zoom drains every device. Yeah. There was, you know, an anecdotal experience. I was in Toronto. Some drunk hit a power line, lost all power. So I had to go to running off my 5G off my phone through all three devices until they almost all died. 
which was terrible. So I took my camera, had my camera off as much as possible. I, you know, I, and I think there's always going to be circumstances like that. We'll just roll with it as, as as we can. Yeah, just I hate to see policy like this be weaponized at any time in the future. Yeah. And that's kind of my only concern. Uh, I think it, I understand why you'd like us to see us all. Um, but I think I think that's four of us now, so there's no point in me saying that again. Yeah. Um, so just further to the bylaw on this, so it says policy is not binding as such yeah um so there's uh, so the bylaw is binding mm -hmm. so if the if the participation was in the bylaw that it had to be camera on then it's binding yeah but this is in a policies and there's wiggle room on it um the uh so um i actually had a point but i don't anymore right <laughs> Oh, no, I, I, actually, just just for there, it's not targeting you at all. I mean, we, I've I've used it a lot. And, yeah. Uh, yes, there's background distractions that I've had also when traveling, and quite frankly, I've turned off the the camera when I want to stretch and not have the whole world watching me stretch. Yeah, and I think we've all we've all done that. I I was um, heading to uh, Williams Lake to. Uh, for my wife's eye surgery and she was driving because I had a uh, CSRD meeting that I had to attend and it was like, oops, I'm going around the corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, the odd thing was I was voted chair of the meeting and I'm going like, well, what the hell now? I'm out of, I don't, you know, how do I participate? Anyway, mm -hmm. so those things happen, so. Yeah, sir, sir, I keep laughing, by the way. I just can't, can't get that video of that meeting where the guy accidentally, it was a cat. <laughs> out of my head. Yeah. yeah, he turned his thing on and made him a cat. <laughs> I just can't get that out of my head. All right, Councillor Lucio, any comments on this? Um, we've kind of covered it, but I know when it comes to like discussion, um, when you're participating electronically, sometimes you don't notice the hand up. Um, and I know when I did a meeting, you asked me to turn my video on when you knew that I wanted to contribute to the conversation. So I'm just I'm glad that there's some wiggle room with this game policy. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. Councilor Stapleton, any further comment? Uh, no, um, maybe the, the last comment I'll quickly make is, you know, the, the concern that Ms. Floyd brought up about, you know, tracking attendance, um, you know, maybe, you know, if there's, if there's you know, the, the, the willingness of council to, to, to change this so that we could have the camera off, but maybe just tell the chair, hey, look, I'm going to be here for as long as I can be. You know, you can tell it as a half attendance or a, you know. Uh, there's always ways, you know, now that we've got, everybody's got cell phone numbers, so should something happen, say I have to leave, whatever, you can always send Cindy a text and, and say, hey, I'm leaving, that sort of thing. It, that happens to me uh, every once in a while with CSRD stuff, and when the meetings tend to go long, it's like, you know, and I've got other appointments or, uh, you know, a prime example is, sorry, I've got community of the whole, I've got to go. And so I won't, I'm not sending the chair a text. I'm sending the recording secretary a text saying I have to leave now. Just note that my time I've left and, and go. Okay. So those are the things I think we get done. So, uh, Cindy, you would like us to make a motion that this comes forward to uh, council? That's correct. Um, so we're making a we're making so it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. so I just just think Drew, uh, before we make that motion, I'm quite happy. We, and I think we're generally, but on the video thing, I think we've all talked about that. So I'm just wondering about uh, on the video that council members participating electronically endeavor to keep their cameras on and maybe some other qualifiers. So rather than this must yeah. kind of thing, and Good I think point. that's grab, grabbing the intention. Okay. You okay Start off with the camera. I am, yeah. So I will do the track changes for that one as well and share it before and then I'll, it comes forward. To and then I'll put the motion on with that. So item number two approved with the following amendments. Yeah. Seconded for that motion. Councillor Cherry. Any further discussion on that? All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. I'm going to move on to uh, procedure bylaw update. All right. So this was another fun one. <laughs> If Councillor Cleary kind of spurred this on, we knew that it had to happen, but um, kind of lit a fire under corporates. 
seats. So this, I really just want to be discussion. Um, the intent is to, so what I did was um, the province in 2022 created this procedure bylaw guide. It's linked in your report. And it was collaboration with the province, LGMA and UBCM with the working group on responsible conduct. So the same group that um, worked on that standard, the forging for responsible conduct. Um, so they established this guide and in the guide, it lays out the legislative requirements and then also best practices. So anytime we make changes to the council procedure, we need to give notice to the public. So you'll see in the um, presentation later on, there's kind of a timeline that includes the required notification. But our current bylaw was adopted in 2016. It's only been amended twice. Um, on October 21st, and that was to allow for the electronic meetings uh, following COVID in, or sorry, October 2021. And then again in February 2022, we amended it again because we did not include the electronic participation for committee and commission meetings. So our bylaw meets all of the legislative requirements. It does not meet all of the best practices. So this is where I have a bunch of questions for council on whether or not you want to consider the best practices that we don't meet. We do meet a lot of them and in the, the rather long report or discussion paper, I apologize for that, but I tried to lay out, lay out where we met and where we didn't through the green check marks and the red X's. So the first section is the role of council in conduct and debate. Um, best practices are to include the use of electronic devices during meetings. They've addressed them, whether or not council members should or can use electronic devices and under what circumstances. So the question is, do you as a council want to include something related to that? Or are you good with the way things are happening right now? Well, so we all use electronic devices by way of our iPads, right? Yes, I think this is more this. So council discussion is happening and. Okay, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. So council discussion may be happening and then I may be getting texts from staff because something's coming up or um, we need to deal with something or I forgot something, right. right? And so I don't have an issue with that. I'm not seeing uh, wanton use around the table of, uh, of cell phones. Um, it's pretty, you know, if there's an emergency, that sort of thing. But uh, so what do you guys think? I mean, what's going on the table? How do you feel? What did you guys say? Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. And as long as it doesn't, and I think there's two, the two danger areas, whether it becomes a distraction right. um, to the individual counselor, and that's that's maybe more of a code of conduct uh, issue as opposed to uh, a procedural thing. Uh, the the other is uh, lobbying, lobbying and uh, a debate between because this is a problem, some debate that's occurring out in this electronic world right. simultaneously. So if Councillor Cherry and I are saying, well, we need to change, you know, we need to steer it, then, then that, you know, how, what's that effect? And so that's, I think, the challenging area. I don't think we've had that problem. Um, it, the, uh, um, and it's been quite useful sometimes to minimize distraction in the meeting. So I know there's been the odd time I've texted Cindy saying, okay, what about blah, blah, blah? And you said, yeah, it's okay. And it just stops the distraction in the meeting. So I think it's been very useful from that perspective. Um, and then the other, the on the, you know, I, I really don't think there's a problem because then the other reason to allow the devices to be on is sometimes we have personal things in our life and we need to have some kind of availability as to, uh, um, you know, so for example, 
in my situation, uh, my wife has is able to track where I'm in. I'm at on my like. So if we were to prohibit the devices, then uh, that starts to infringe on personal life as as well. So I, I'm. That's, I guess that's my comments. I don't think there's a problem. And then if there is an issue, maybe that's more in a code of conduct. Sure. 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 I agree with Councilor Palmer. I don't see there being an issue. But just so everybody knows, when the camera used to be over there, and there was a previous council, you know, the public was able to see what a certain council person was being texted and reading out and having conversation at the table and privately. So I think that's what spurred this. Sure. So we should have comment. Um, yeah, I think we collectively are fairly respectful of each other's time and the discussions that's happening at the table. I think it's a hard thing to make a firm rule on working in restaurants. There's always been that discussion of like, should there be no cell phones? And it's an impossible one to fully enforce, and you're gonna get pushback of how that is. I think. Right now, we're respectful of each other, and I don't think that that needs to really be expanded on and tightened up. Um, yeah, so that's my thoughts there. Thanks. Councilor Lynn, a comment? Uh, yeah, I don't really see a problem at this point. And uh, the reality is, these days, is, is there's expectations of sort of real time communication. So somebody could come at me with an emergency of some kind and be like, where yeah. are you? And uh, they, they, you know, so. And I just don't think there's been a problem yet. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Steven. Um, I would I would agree with with what's been said around the table. I don't really think there's a problem with cell phone use. I think you know there's potential of like a an ethical or a moral, you know, but I think that's on the individual and we're not really policing that right now. So and I think it's just to be cognizant of like when we have presentations, you know, and making sure that we're like being present and giving them the attention. It deserves so yeah that must do the same and, thing. And from a church perspective as i look around the table i don't see there being an issue um as you've all stated you're all uh, very present and uh, if there's an emergent uh, deal deal with the emergency and, and go from there um in the work that i am still doing is uh, you know there's things that happen where there is emergencies and uh, if i'm sitting at this table i mean need to be able to put other people into place to uh, deal with those situations. So I don't have an issue with that. So I think if we leave that kind of what, what you've got. Um, go ahead. So the next one is, should existing policies be connected? So one of the best practices was that we link the our current policies into the bylaw. I don't really see the benefit other than then you get to Councillor Palmer's point where the, the policy is more, you can decide whether or not you want to follow the policy, but the bylaw is required. It'd be a lot easier to find mm -hmm. having them linked. You only have that one thing, one tab open. But if they're linked, then you're required to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be very reticent to link. If, if, if we want it in the bylaw, put it in the bylaw. Uh, I, because that essentially the policy then becomes bylaw. I, I, I think that's confusing. And, and so, from my perspective, I, I agree. Uh, not having it linked uh, puts the onus on the individual counselor to be present and to be able to uh, follow code of conduct, social media, whatever the case may be, versus saying, okay, oops, you did wrong. Somebody's got to slap your hand. Uh, that's where it comes. So, Councilor Lucero, on comment? Um, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, with the ability to kind of modify the policy as we move forward with the electronic meetings and stuff like that, if it's tied directly to the bylaw, then I think we would have to go back to what we had just talked about to kind of rein that in a little bit more. Sure. sure. Councilor Leno. Yeah, I, uh, I would echo that. I just I favor the policy part being mm -hmm. policy. Councilor Stephen. Yeah, I'll add to that as well. I think policies are guidelines and bylaws are bylaws, and they're two separate things, and they shouldn't be linked together. Okay. All right. Great. Okay, so uh, designating a member to act in place of the mayor. Sorry. I can interrupt. Uh, what's in front of us here is a little bit different than what's on the screen. So what's in front of you there is. 
in the, the discussion paper, wherever there's a red X, yes. that's what's up on the screen. I understand. Uh, I do. There's one thing on the screen, I think, that I don't want to skip over. Okay, what's that? Uh, a reasonable length of time a council member can speak on a given matter. What I, section is that under? Part four, under real and council conduct and debate. I know we have a green check mark here on the piece of paper, but uh, we do not have the time. And there's been numerous occasions where people have just ranted, gone way off topic, and spoken for 10, 15 minutes about something that was not even connected to the matter on the floor. And that needs to be made in. It's a reasonable length of time a council member can speak on a given matter. Um, so would you, are you suggesting that there is a time frame? I think there needs to be. And I'm open to a discussion with everybody here. To determine what a reasonable time frame is? Yeah, and if they're even open to it. Um, rebuttals, everything. And the goal in here is to have all of us, you know, muted after a certain timeline. It's to stop, you know, I don't want to say the grandstanding to the camera, but, you know, everything going so far off topic that things are getting confused uh, when it's not even about the matter at hand anymore. Okay. So then that, I'll let Councillor Palmer speak and then I'm going to speak to that. So, Councillor Palmer. Um, yeah, so I, I believe I believe the time frames are actually there, and we we don't. I, uh, I there's is there not a ten minute within the legislation? Or That's under the, committee of the whole. There is nothing under the council. Oh, okay, interesting. Probably the same regulations that generally uh, uh, apply. The the other so that's just committee of the whole. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. The. Um, uh, on the debate, so this is probably in, uh, so in, certainly in Robert's rules of order, not necessarily time, but people's opportunity for, for speaking to a matter and having the floor for that, that period, for whatever that period of time. Um, certainly the chair has the prerogative to, when it's going off, has the prerogative to shut, shut, shut that, that down. Um, there is also rights of individuals in the, in the committee to, uh, uh, expound. Um, so, you know, possibly that timeline. I, I, I think it's we're largely covered because if you start to curtail debate, uh, like I think we had one uh, little tangle where we had a difference of opinion on that. Um, and uh, I think there were some procedural anomalies on that that created that situation. That's what that's. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I don't dispute that. Um, so uh, the time the timelines might be appropriate, but I think really the onus is on the chair because if it goes off topic, you have the ability to to rein that in, to bring it back in. And so you as counselors do have the ability to just raise your hand and go your point of order. Um, we've got off topic or whatever, and that may remind me to bring it back. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah. You guys okay with that sort of thing, that scenario? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Discuss more. I think that we should have timelines though to keep things. I mean, some of these meetings have gone super late. You know, it's one thing if we're having an open debate and we're not seeing eye to eye, but once, you know, once the debate's finished, okay. Um, I'm not saying three minutes like at public hearings, but it'd be great to see. I, I know there's other councils that have yes. time restrictions, and I know nobody wants to sit there with a stopwatch but you know there's been there's been times that's fine yeah I, I you know i think i think it's definitely has merits and if it the mirrors on the on the 10 minute because it generally we're not going to be watching the clock but it, it creates that opportunity if there is a um a counselor or a perception of a counselor uh going on too long then it limits that uh, 10 minutes is a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask this question. So, you know, if we get to that length of time and we've done, uh, whoever's speaking has said their piece, and then, uh, oh, I want to speak one more time. If I ask the question to you, is this further information to what you've already spoken, or are you repeating yourself? Are you going to be offended with that? And I don't want to word that in a way that's offensive. So yeah, if I may anyway, weigh in, because you you have that ability. That's already yeah. that's already with yeah. Robert's rules of order. So if it's being repeated over and over and over again, um, the uh, uh, you have the ability to shut that 
shut that down uh, right away. Just uh, the other um, uh, oh, just yeah, just a, a point for this council. Yeah, sometimes it goes on, and we need to have the dialogue, and there's more information. I, I don't think it's nearly as bad as the, like with the previous council. We had one councilor that was <laughs> bringing it up after immediately after every resolution. We had uh, a yeah, replay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What councilor statements? I just wanted to state that like I've actually really appreciated a lot of the dialogue that we've been having at this table, hearing everybody's opinions, um, and I don't want to have anybody feel like they're you know within a time frame or a limit. And I think you know the onus should be on the chair just to kind of make sure we stay on top and make sure that we're moving forward. Um, but I think you know I, I think having the dialogue is really important because I don't want people to feel like you know they're being left out, they're not being heard, um, you know their views aren't being expressed. So. I kind of, I'm more of the mindset of just leaving it as it is for now. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. My goal here isn't to limit the dialogue. It's very hard, unless you're taking a massive amount of notes, when someone's gone on a 10 minute rant to actually rebut things individually. So I'm just looking, if we can sharpen that up, I think it'd be productive. Okay. Just to, if I, if I may follow up to Council Cherry's. Um, point there, I, I don't view these as rants. I view them as, as you, you know, it's not a rant. It's somebody expressing their opinion. And, and when we come into a mindset of saying, you know, all oh, Castle Cherry's just, you know, going off at the at the realm again and just, you know, spewing a whole bunch of nonsense, it's, you, you know, we're not having a dialogue. We're just coming into this with a mindset of like, oh, great, here we go again. I'm like, hit the timer. Let's go. 10 minutes. All right, apologies. Well, you're, like, apologies you're all on a second. We're having some time for you. <laughs> apologies for not using the term rant. <laughs> but it's just, it, it, it's, 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 you know, it's going back to, to before. It's, it's having a dialogue and coming into the table and, you know, you, you know, having having the ability to have your mind changed during the discussion, right? Like, that's kind of the intent of this process is not to come in and say, well, you know, this is my way or the highway, you know? Is to come in and say, okay, listen, like, you know, I've heard, I've heard what the people on the streets have had to say. I want to hear what my other counselors have to say because we're talking to other people and having that dialogue, having that exchange of information, and then you, you know, like, you may be swayed. So that's kind of my mindset on this. Council, we see how you have um, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I would have to agree that like the discussions we've had around the table have been good. I think the clarification of like, does your 10 minutes run up until you ask a question that's directed towards staff? Or if you then have a follow up, is that continuing on your 10 minutes? If we just sit here and don't have any rebuttals, are we just letting someone run out their 10 minutes so they can't talk after that? And I think there's ways to use that timeline to affect the conversation at the table. I agree that we don't need the grandstanding and the unnecessary description of the topic we're talking about because we obviously know what we're talking about to kind of direct the conversation a little bit faster, but I think the timeline might be a little bit too restrictive. I think if it mirrors the committee the whole with a loose 10 minutes, um, but yeah, I think the clarification on once you ask a question, does that restart your timer or is that just a continuation of your 10 minutes? Yeah, so I, I think we'll play that by ear in my mind, but uh, Councillor Alima, you haven't weighed in yet before I go back to Councillor Chair. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I don't really support a timeline. I think the chair always has the ability to cut off debate. Um, I think having a timeline might change the dynamic in that, you know, if I uh, if I wanted to, I could run the clock on something and not, you know, get to the answer or whatever, knowing that I'm about to, uh, you know, run out of time. So, yeah, I don't think so. The pictures have what, 30 seconds now? I'll let that ball go, 90 seconds, something yeah. like that. I mean, we chalk that up as a good intention with potential negative consequences. So, just retract it. Thank you, Council Parliament. Yeah, I, lost one yeah, yeah, yeah just like, um, just, uh, three points. So first of all, as uh, Councillor Cherry uh, ranted for more than <laughs> uh, So yeah, just affirming what Councillor Orlando, I think the tools are there with the chair. And you did ask the question, Mayor Souls, on are you fine with this? And, and I'm absolutely fine and encourage it. Uh, and I think we have the opportunity, and I think you've respected that if we say, okay, this is going on. And also when you're, you know, it's trying to be cut off, if there's new, I think there is our ability as individuals say, no, I have some new information. Um, and um, 
Yeah, that's that's it. So you're good. All right. Any further discussion on this point? Seeing none. Ms. Floyd. Let's All right. Ahead. So designating a member to act in place of the mayor. Um, and just sorry. Okay. On that note, in the ten minute conversation, there are a lot of red X's. So I'm not sure if your your worship, if you want everybody to weigh in, or if you like you want to go around the table, or if you just want to address people that have something to say on the topic. Right. We, we have a while to go. Yeah, let's uh, let's go through. You've got your best practices. You've got your presentation up there. Let's go through that. If there's some other things that council feels that we need to address as we go through, let's let's address them. Okay. So um, currently we have um, acting mayor positions laid out for the year. Mm -hmm. Some best practices, um, according to this uh, guide. They lay out long term leave of absence uh, regulations to designate a position of acting mayor through the election. Um, by all of all members. So, for example, your worship, if you were on extended leave for six months. Do you want to have all of council vote for an acting mayor or would you switch? Would you want to keep it? Councillor Cherry does it for his two months, then Councillor Palmer does. Do you want consistency across a long-term leave path? Well, I think we need to go around the table and ask that question. If I were to weigh in on that, to give each of our councillors uh, the ability to sit in the chair and to do the job gives a wide range of experience around the table. And they might have uh, an appreciation for the position as we go through things but what do you guys feel like around the table how do you feel councillor statement i i think uh, one of my concerns would be that if we opted to go with a long-term acting mayor what would be the event if, if so primary acting primary mayor leave of absence secondary acting mayor leave of absence then a third as opposed to you know, if you're rotating it through, um, that might mitigate that that potential. And then I think the other thing is, um, I think it allows people the opportunity to, to be in that role and it kind of adds um, to some, some succession planning and, and training and, you know, opportunities. And I think there's a benefit to, to you know, or a potential benefit for everybody at the table for that. So that's my two cents on that. Thanks. Okay. Councilor Orlando, comment? Uh, I support keeping it the way it is. Uh, and um, uh, the only comment I would have is not super related, it's just um, making sure that um, people are aware what, of what that means, you know? So, for example, you might need to go sign a check at City Hall um, or those kinds of things while you're acting mayor. So, maybe even just a link to, or even a reminder that now you're acting mayor in case the mayor is out of town or something like that. So, yeah. Councilor Lisa? Um, yeah, I would agree. I think we deal with enough decisions. We don't have to pick who's the acting mayor. We already have that designated to us. Um, I agree with uh, Councillor Orlando that a little, you know, reminder or what like, the expectations are that the acting mayor um, might be beneficial with four new councillors around the table. Okay. Councillor Chair. Uh, Long term leave. <laughs> is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yeah. Long term leave, uh, I would be in the opinion that if it's six months, there's six of us. <clears throat> Everybody got it for a month. Just to share that knowledge and to see what that chair feels like. The gavel. Squishy. Um, I don't want your seat. <laughs> but for you the gavel, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's how I feel. Um, I think it'd be uh, the experience, the wealth of experience that we'd all have. With, uh, Teach us a lot. Coach Paul McCullough. It's just debating as to how much I weigh in. So uh, on the hypothetical situation that you're gone for six months, uh, and may, maybe we're having too much conversation around this uh, hypothetical situation. Um, if that was real, then the responsibilities go much beyond the chairing of the meeting. It's much, much, much more. And, uh, and it's not the right place for a training ground, especially on a rotation from my perspective. 
Um, and so for that hypothetical situation, I think we could have that discussion at the time when it occurs. Um, some communities have a, uh, like Sycamus has a designated for the whole term, the uh, alternate mayor or acting mayor. Um, then just a comment on the training. Uh, I, I think that's an area, so it's a little bit aside from this, but the opportunity for uh, encouraging skill development by counselors because uh, the time goes by and there isn't uh, that doesn't occur and I had that discussion with some of the counselors from the previous council that uh, because once you're thrust into it basically you become a puppet essentially staff for state of emergency or something if you're gone you'll know the stuff but uh, generally uh, somebody new on chairing meetings I think really from my perspective I'll, I'll, I'll shut this off pretty quick uh, is the opportunity uh, for councillors to be chair of committees and possibly a consideration of the committee of the whole. So some communities, there's a rotation or a designate on to, to create that uh, skill development uh, of, of chairing meetings. Um, uh, but then I'll just uh, confirm that right now, I, I don't think it's broken on as far as the, 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 this rotation that's being done, I think it's fine. Um, and there's be pros and cons of other other ways. So, but I think there is opportunity for an individual counselor uh, opportunity um, outside of long term absence. Great. All right. So the next one, and these aren't required. This is something that so it says should a requirement for the mayor to advise the corporate officer of acting mayor be specified. So right now the mayor does tell me. Okay, Councillor Cherry's acting. He's going to do this, this, and this. It's not written in our bylaw, so that's the only reason why it's on here. Should it be specified in the council procedure bylaw, or are you guys okay with the way it's happening now? It's okay. And so that basically means if I'm going to be away, whoever's in that rotation is going to take that meeting and be able to go from there, and that in turn. Uh, spark staff up to communicate with that counselor to say, uh, you know, I would already have that conversation with whoever's rotation and say, listen, I have to be away. Can you um, fill in while I'm away? And then um, staff wouldn't have that conversation saying, okay, here's what your responsibilities are going to be for this time period. Counselor. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, from my experience working in the private sector, if it's not written as a policy, Sometimes it doesn't get done. Uh, and for that, I think we should have as, as much of it written down as possible. Okay. Councilor Power, color. Hmm. I, see, I, I, I think it's actually inferred. Out. Inferred. So there's a the acting councilor is or at the acting mayor. If you're gone, that's already through the schedule. That's yeah. already established. That's clear. And you take on the entire duties of the mayor. Uh, not recognizing that you're not that, so that's that's there so if you're not here and there is a, an address that needs to be done or um, uh, quite frankly a ribbon cutting or a yeah. uh, a special meeting uh, or a state of emergency that's all in, in entrenched in in that so I don't think any further specifications really necessary because we're going to spend a lot of time on hypothetics sure. um, and also, in the unusual events that within uh, either the, the, the procedure bylaws that exist or within Rock Roberts Rules of Order, there is, you know, the second the acting mayor is not there, there is procedures already established for recognizing that's a decision of council. So I, I don't think we need to. Yeah, I think our policy kind of states, and I could be wrong here, but policy kind of states, so if I was gone, the acting mayor for that term was gone, it would be the next, uh, who's ever scheduled next to be taken in or not? No, we don't have that. Um, okay. Councilor Connor was correct in Robert's rules. It's that those members that are present decide. Perfect. And, and, and because Robert's rule is referred into the yes. procedure bylaw, it is the bylaw, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Any comments from anyone else? Councilor? Yeah, um, not really so much about the policy, but I just uh, think it, uh, just to reiterate that if uh, there should be no surprises to somebody who's acting there. So like 
walk into a meeting not knowing you have to chair it or um, suddenly the, the, the river's flooding and you know <laughs> you didn't you know so yeah people yeah. need to do it. Any other comments? Councilor Chair, you have any? No. Okay. Who's come? Who's Saki? Uh, I think yeah. mine's still in me. Hey. So it's, it's, it's a good idea. I'm off. Or you're on the calendar. No, I'm last. I believe it's Who's me, made? and that's why I, I bring it up because I swapped with uh, Councilor Devlin. Okay. Yeah. I'm off the hook now. So that, that's an interesting communications thing, though, because mm -hmm. I don't know that. If I was, if you were gone, I'd look at the list. So that's a communications thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought you guys would. And that, it, that is on the list. That's yeah. what it's on the website. Oh, okay. It's on the website. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. It's good. Is it alphabetical? No. Yeah. No, no. Yes. Yeah. And you were just, just a comment. I uh, I pride myself on being prepared for meetings, but one of the meetings I was the least prepared for on my last term, I ended up walking in and not knowing I needed to chair it. <laughs> and that's always you find out, okay, what's on the agenda? How are we going to deal with it? Yeah. And so I think we need to be cognizant of making sure whoever's rotation it is is aware of what's going on. Um, go so, ahead. So, so we, we've got quite a bit to go through. I think this is really good dialogue. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm prepared to be sitting here for a really, really long time. And I, I don't know if we could pick this up uh, or if there's some urgency, if we could pick it up uh, again. Um, I, I, we, I'm, I'm good for a while, but by five o'clock, you know, we're two hours now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just so let's let's just start going through this stuff, and then when we get to the point where we, because it, it is conversation that we just have on yes, this one. conversation, yes. so that we can uh, move forward. All right, um, if you don't mind carrying on. Let's okay, go. so under application of procedural rules, should committee and commission procedures be combined into separate bylaws? So right now we have one bylaw, and it separates out council meetings, committee of the whole, committee and commissions. So some municipalities have a committee and commission procedural bylaw and, and a council bylaw. Ours is all together. So I don't know, this is just a question. Do you want to separate the two? Sounds like it won't work. So where, where are we on the, the this? Uh, we are on the top there. Page four, page four. 28 of 42. Okay. Um, so you're asking about the but to have a separate bylaw for commissions as opposed to um, uh, committee committee. So from an academic perspective, I think they should be separate because they're very different. And I think there's there's usually confusion uh, amongst counselors and the community for sure as to the difference of commissions. Um, although most of our commissions are much different than a committee, but they are, they have separate powers essentially. Um, and so I thought they, as a commission, they are governed by other bylaws. So as you're well. asking- about, Sorry, Councilor Palmer, I'm asking about committee and commission procedures. Oh, procedures. Yes. Uh, so, so both of them together be removed. Leave council, council, and then committee and commission, a separate bylaw. Okay. Okay, so then I'll just backtrack on all that. Um, basically, the way our commissions are functioning, they're very little difference from committees. Yeah. So keep them the same. So if we had a separate bylaw for committees and commissions, and then a separate bylaw for council and committee the whole, would you guys be in favor of that? Because basically, that's kind of how we're operating now, even if it's is it not? Uh, they should have the same rules. I see. Committee of the whole yeah. and council. And committees to oh. to a certain we'll we'll end up talking about that later on okay. on the agenda structure. Okay, so do you need an answer on that right now or no, not necessarily. Okay, let's move on then. Um some best practices for closed meetings are listed in um the procedure bylaw. I think that it's more legislation um and doesn't need to be addressed specifically in codes of conduct conflict of interest confidentiality it's kind of a given but that was listed in the guide as a best practice any comments on that you guys content with what we're doing now um it's related and it's in the check marked areas um on um 
from, from my perspective, we should be communicating as much as we possibly can regarding uh, closed meetings. Uh, in in uh, I think Cindy might disagree with me on some of these uh, items, but to, if if we are able to explain why we're going into camera to the to the to the world, um, I do not see that as a disadvantage. I think that's actually very very healthy. Uh, so, for example, if we're going to have a, an in-camera discussion, notwithstanding whether it was appropriate or not, I would say, for example, uh, uh, in a public meeting. So I'm, I'm already restrained. I can't give the example because we went in-camera for a specific item that was that I think could have reasonably been stated to the public, saying we're going in to discuss this particular item. Um, Right now, I'm restrained from saying what that is because it was all done in camera. And I think it would have been healthier for us and healthier for the community to know what that was. And so I, ideally, and, and we can, you can move it on after this because it's going into a different area. Ideally, in my mind, if we say, okay, we're gonna go in, sometimes you just can't say anything. You know, it's a personnel issue, can't say a thing. If we're going in camera for a development to discuss a land thing, uh, or say for housing, the community housing, or what, whatever the thing, then just tell the community. That's my perspective. Sure. And, and, and so we may be able to do that in broad terms, right, mm -hmm. rather than specific. So, you know, you look at the, they keep saying the three L's for in camera, land, labor, and uh, legal, right? And so you look at that and go, okay, so we're going in camera. Well, that's general terms. But not everybody in the community knows that those things that we're going to discuss in camera. So I don't disagree if we can uh, basically make a statement we're going in camera to discuss issues re related to whatever land or or whatever. How do you guys feel? Let's go around the table, Councillor Olin. Well, our current policy now was added or changed. I mean, this is a decade ago, but it says on the agenda at the bottom the reasons why it is in camera uh, under the community charter. So the list is there already. So it'll say specifically why. Um, I don't know if anyone else does that. I mean, I think it, 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 it you know, if we're going to say, oh, we're going to talk about the affordable housing project, for example, but we're not going to talk about, you know, a, a, a labor issue, uh, then it, it becomes a, a gray area of what do we and do we not. And I guess my question is, does anyone else do that? Any other municipality? Chris, so do we all just go and basically say we're going in camera pursuant to section C, D, e, and K of the community chart? Some identify the topics, um, not all, but if it's a, a special, then it usually identifies the topic, but in a broad sense. Yeah, the reference to the legis that's legislated, the yeah. you know, what item under that, the specifics is a discretionary item. I suspect most communities don't. Yeah. So how do you guys feel, Councilor Chair? Just, just for clarification, we could go, or you could say, you know, we're going in camera to talk about a legal issue and then state the applicant. No, no, you couldn't. There's, there's, there's other legislation that would restrict it. That's, there's yeah, a privacy that's, policy. That's what I thought. Yeah. I don't know if you talk about this. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it would be good to have it in a more digestible format for um, the community because, yes, we have all of those references, but no one is going to check what all of those letters reference directly to or if we're able to attach more digestible words to it then we are at least explain why we're going in camera in the broad sense without actually being specific okay that's just it uh personally i i prefer to just keep it as is i think pursuant to to how it's written right now i think it's really good because i think ultimately if we start providing information i think through you know somebody could come come up to you and you know trick you kind of trick you and say hey like that conversation and all of a sudden you feel like they have like that that knowledge and you're like oh like so i think i think it's just pretty much like clear kind of like pursuant to the you know subsection whatever <laughs> yeah um, i'm i'm in favor of uh being as open as possible um uh, but you know there is potential for it to be 
a really problematic and I would want to know how it works for other people. The other thing is we have items to report from in camera. So that's at the end of discussing something, we must remember to say, oh, we're going to report this out uh, if appropriate. We can always debate and discuss that. Um, and as a suggestion, if our goal is to be uh, more transparent, uh, this, uh, you know, items to report are only reflected on the minutes of the meeting, and I don't think anybody reads those except for everyone here, of course, um, uh, prior to the, to the meeting. So, um, yeah, but um, maybe it could just be a communications effort on our part. So if it's the kind of thing we want everyone to know, we could take a step to, after the meeting, to let everyone know we uh, talked about it. Further comment? Uh, Keep it going. Okay. So, uh, Mayor Souls, I, I think probably I was a bit of a distraction there. Uh, looks like we proceed and then basic on the specific if it was for us. Uh, I don't think there's any need to have uh, any further specifics for in camera uh, conduct. I don't think it's necessary at this point. All right, let's move on. All right, so the next one is legislation that we need to provide written notice um, of committee meetings to each member. I am hoping that council will be amenable to amending the bylaw to specify email as a form of written notice because um, a former CAO required that staff used to do the meeting notice and put it in every councillor's mailbox. Council doesn't come to city hall often enough. So those, all those notices would just get recycled. Yeah, I think we're all on yeah, board with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Notwithstanding uh, some, yes. from the trees. Notwithstanding some of the challenges on the email on these uh, iPads, at which I've talked to about that before, I right. think we're all struggling with these uh, uh, iPad because sometimes stuff gets missed. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but I think, yeah, that's all kind of an obvious change. Okay. And then the next one should details of remote access be included on the notice? So, Right now, we say that um, a meeting has been scheduled for this date um, in council chambers and electronic. We do not say on there, on our YouTube channel, you can follow it. And this is, again, just best practice. Um, do you want that included right in the council procedure bylaw? Or have we communicated enough to the community that that's where they can can watch the meetings as they're happening. I would say that. Yeah. Uh, I would say that very few people actually watch the YouTube video. <laughs> right. So it yeah. seems unnecessary for us to okay. do. Councilor Council Park? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, there's not a lot of people, but people do do watch it. Uh, so for example, Tuesday's meeting, I think there was about 30 people that watched it. And I think you know, possibly more people would watch it if they knew it was there. It might be just for a few seconds to see how boring it is, but. Uh, I believe 10 or 15 of the 30 are staff. Right. And, and the rest. Oh, are <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Chair, no, 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 I got nothing. Councilor yeah. Orlando. Uh, nothing really. I mean, just can we just say it's on yeah. YouTube? Yes. The city of Rebels of yeah. YouTube, just put that on the top of the form. And Never played that. Yes. Yeah, yep. should be able to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Stevenson, any comment? No. Okay. Thanks, Gilbert. Okay. Um, so, under technology, some municipalities discuss loss of quorum for electronic participation. Um, I think it's pretty, I don't think it's required. If we lose quorum, the mayor can call for a recess until we regain quorum. But do you want it included in the bylaw? Isn't it already been? That's no. uh, I don't think it's necessary. It's already covered under other legislation, but yeah. so we can't change legislation. So it's going to be at the the chairs, you know, unless you want to specify how how long. But that's at your discretion. You know, if the quorum's gone, you can basically shut it down. Then yeah, exactly. And we'll know sort of thing as we're watching if it's electronic. And I'm like, okay, you know. Usually, I know what's happening when I'm used traveling, that sort of thing. We're going to go through that and go, okay, so we lost that person. Uh, chances of getting them back in the next 15 minutes or so, but no. So let's just shut it down. 
All right, so agendas. So right now we are required to say where agendas can be accessed. So right now, if someone came in and they wanted an agenda, we could print them a copy. Um, it does not reference the fact that iCompass, um, they can go onto the website and access the agenda through iCompass. Do you want to include that? Or are you good just with leaving it the way it is? How often do you have anything else? Yeah, I'm just let you decide. Uh, include it. Nobody knows where on our website to find it. Yeah, as a counselor, I can't even find it on our website. <laughs> it's at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, I know. It took me way too long to figure that out. I'd be shocked. And if you do find it, yeah, I won't download it anyway. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're crossing the line on the same workplace. <laughs> when we're putting out our newsletter, can we put links to the agendas in the email that goes out? We except, could, except quite often the email goes out before the agenda is published. Okay. Links to icons. They're already in there. Perfect. All right. Okay. Um, so back to agendas again. We do not have any specific on the agenda about notice of motions. And I think lately we've had a few with this council. I think it's probably a good idea to put a section in there on the process for bringing a notice of motion forward. Right now, um, what we have in there is that a notice of motion must be given to every council member at least 24 hours in advance in writing. Which for <laughs> for any council meeting, including committee level. Uh, clarification question given to council by whom? The person presenting the notice of motion? Either the person or presenting staff. or staff. Yeah, because the person presenting should let staff know in advance as well. So, just a question. I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought this is already established that uh, notice of motion or an agenda item must be by noon on the Monday the week prior just for an agenda item yes and the notice of motion is a 24 hour thing but that doesn't automatically put it on the agenda that's right a so, unanimous vote so I, I, in my mind this is the procedure the technical procedure is pretty clear as to how that's done so I, i'm just is it not or uh, so, I, I guess it is but i guess my thing is does does, do all of the council members know how to bring a notice of motion forward? Can you council clarify members. exactly what the procedure is right now? <laughs> so, so, no. so it's not written in our procedure bylaw. Okay. That's the problem. But right now the procedure is typically for the councillor that wants to bring it forward to go to the corporate officer, review, help nail it down so that it's a clear, concise notice of motion. We bring it to council. Council does a unanimous decision or unanimous vote to put it on the agenda, which it could be discussed that day that if it's okay. unanimous. Yeah. Otherwise, you can put it if as long as it is a majority vote, it can go on the next council agenda. Okay, thank you. Good. So the, the problems, the problems that occur. So ultimately we can get a, something put on the agenda as long as we're all in agreement. That's yes. that's that's just an adjustment to the agenda. The problem with with that is it can tend to hijack the, the important agenda stuff if people if we're just throwing stuff on. So I and I think that's the whole intended for the agenda item that Monday prior. And I think that in general is very reasonable that so that we have enough time to think through. So I know I'm talking about the notice of motion, which is a slightly separate item. Possibly having that clarification within the procedure bylaw, so long as it doesn't override our ability to make reasonable decisions if there's a, a timely matter. Um, and the, probably, I don't think there's going to be a problem with this council, but hypothetically, in, this, in some councils, you have somebody, you know, a council member that's throwing something on there and throw, throwing council off the course on their priorities, and you don't want that to happen. You need to deal with it. I feel we should formalize the procedure um, and my input is that um, uh, we need to have notice of motion there 
um, because uh, if it's not there, then uh, you don't have the ability to bring up topics. And uh, adding to that, uh, if you have a council member there's loads of notice of motion happening, that's a problem. You know, it shouldn't be that way, but you nevertheless need to reserve that right. So I feel it should be formalized. Right the table, anyone else? Council problem. Uh, so just a question. Uh, so how would the, what, what are you suggesting as a, what's being suggested as the mechanism if it's integrated in the procedural bylaw? How would we functionally, so does, does the agenda item stay the same that Monday, at noon Monday before? Yes. And then how, how does this notice a motion get on the agenda? So right now there isn't a heading for notice of motion. So we kind of, if it's, if it stems from business arising, then we have a spot to put it. Otherwise, it, it doesn't really go anywhere. So I was hoping that we could have a heading notice of motion. It likely won't be used very often, but it could be early in the agenda. And then the procedures laid out in the procedure bylaw on how to get a notice of motion on an agenda. So why don't we put it directly after where we put public hearings before we do announcements from there? Put it in there. It's really on in the agenda, and it's also a public thing. So if we've got, you know, a public hearing or whatever, um, it's either either just after that or just before that. In my mind, then that comes to chair. Uh, I just like to agree with Council Orlando, and then because you mentioned how the layout is on our agenda, is that going to be addressed? In yes. The, okay. Yeah. And then if there's clarification. Uh, if a notice of motion is brought up to go to the committee to hold, is that that's a non-voting motion, correct? Yeah, notice of motion typically doesn't go to committee at the whole. Didn't you need one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, was that timing though? Um so so part of the problem, sorry, with notice of motion is that if you want to discuss it that day, we also need to let staff prepare. And if they're not ready to have a discussion and to respond to the notice of motion, then there's no point in getting it on that agenda. So my understanding is that a notice of motion has to be unanimous if it's put on that day's agenda, but the future. Future, it just needs to be carried. Perfect. Yeah. That's, that's not for me. All right, comes probably for the comment. Yeah, it's a, just, I guess, intuitively, and certainly how I've done it is, tying it to that deadline so that there's a reasonable yeah. period of time for staff to prepare or to uh, put that. So that's how I've utilized the notice of motion. So you have that full week, over a week and a half to to uh, do that. And that's, I think that in general is the best way um, because it's not sudden, there's time to think through. Um, and then any urgent items can be dealt with anyway. Uh, so that's the, the, I guess, the first point on the order of on the agenda, one of the things that I know is the the those early items. So whether it's delegations or whatever, it can be distracting from the priorities. So if I put a controversial notice of motion, whatever it is, and it goes right early in the agenda, then is that distracting us from the the council business as a whole? So my favor, I would tend to favor having that further down on the agenda. It's just a, po a point. It may not be an issue, like you say, it probably won't be utilized very often. But that uh, that that's one of the things I note with councils. If there's the most important things should be discussed first. Because I get tired. Okay. Well, we do talk about the order later on. Okay. So, Mayor Souls, I, I need a washroom break if we're going to continue. Uh, yeah, let's let's take a washroom break and then let's just go on for uh, maybe end it at quarter to five if you're okay with that. Sure. And then we can all okay with that. Councilor Palmer, could you mute? Please? Oh, you have to make an announcement that we're going to recess.
Ms. Russo, we're ready to uh, resume. One moment, Your Worship. We're ready, Your Worship. All right, thank you, Mr. So. All right, uh, Ms. Floyd. All right, so now minutes. Right now, in under committee and commissions, it states that minutes need to be presented to council um, at the next meeting date following the committee and commission. Mm -hmm. It doesn't state specifically for council. I don't think it needs it in there, but it's up to you whether or not um, you want to include that. So typically, we take the minutes, they go to the next meeting. I don't think it's an issue. Okay, this next one is one that I would like to see in the procedure bylaw where um, we implement a policy that allows for corporate services to do fixes to make minor corrections to approved minutes. So typos or you know something, something in a, a minor nature. There is no mechanism right now for us to do it, although we do do it. I'm, I'm okay with that because we're talking about uh, you know, changing a word or spelling something correctly or whatever, right? And uh, yeah, why do you guys feel one word can make a big difference? Well, no, if it's if you said that word and then the word that got put. <laughs> It's an interesting one. Is that what you're asking for? Yeah. It is, yeah. yes. I, I think I'll let it pass from my mind. I could drill in. We'll do over a beer sometime. Okay. Any other comments from anyone else? Oh, Councilor Lennox. Should those be um, brought forward to Council when those minor corrections are made? So you're talking about changing minutes from three months ago? and. Uh, well, kind of. So let's, well, where's an example? For example, that on Tuesday, that recommendation that said um, the council provide notice for a disposition of land for two years, and then it had the five-year time frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we didn't notice that during the meeting, can we do a policy where we can just change it to five because the dates clearly stated five years? I mean... Uh, Councilor Orlando and Councilor Church. So to understand, is this approved? So, so those that was an approved agenda, not approved minutes. Yes. Yeah, so, but if the minutes came forward mm -hmm. um, at the next meeting, mm -hmm. nobody noticed that it said two. Mm -hmm. The oh. goes to put the ad in the paper and says, "Oh no, it's two. It should be five. Mm -hmm. Is corporate services authorized to make that correction? And would you let council know that this has been changed? We could. Because so that's just it. We I think I think yeah, you yeah. should let council know know the changes because I certainly wouldn't want to read the minutes for like every last detail to see if mm -hmm. like yeah. some number and it could be like uh, you know a, a building bylaw where the number was changed from four to six meters and that but that's a consequential thing. So as long as we're notified that that there has been changes in their high level, I think that's fine. That's fine. So I wasn't gonna weigh in but the discussion here. <laughs> <laughs> so on that specific one, so the, the five versus two. And uh and so you're saying after it's adopted when we made that error, we didn't see it and pick up on it. Um, and then it's done. So this is now in the procedure bylaw that essentially delegates yes. a change of wording to a legal item. It's an in, it's in, so what's the best practices recommendation? Well, so it's to implement a policy. So not necessarily to include it in the procedure bylaw, yeah. but refer to a policy established to allow for that. So, so from a from a legal perspective, when I'm you know thinking from that, I think probably it should come back to council because I can just see that being in front of the courts. But that's getting into sort of that picking kind of detail, hypothetical. But it's that's that is the making of lawsuits, um, especially if we get into developments and that kind of thing. I think I think the best practice would just get it corrected from um, at the council level. 
and then there's not that legal risk going ahead on important things. Now, minor things. Well, and that's what this is for, just minor, like housekeeping. Things. Yeah, so if it's clarified from that perspective, it'd be fine, because then that just makes practical sense. But if you're talking like that five versus two, I think that actually, if, the, if that had gone by, mm -hmm. that, that would be corrected in the, um, the following meeting or a special meeting if necessary. Okay, Councilor Chair. Just for clarification, it was corrected in the meeting it was, if there was an incorrection in the minutes following at the next meeting. Yeah, or if we just missed it. If we just missed it. I don't know who picked up on it. Uh, well, me, I just, I read it. I was corrected. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, it was, it got picked up. So it was not a problem for that meeting. But if it had gone through, we didn't see that. And then you saw it after the fact. I, I, I think it should probably be corrected at the council level. Um, I think it should come back if there are any adjustments made, just so that we're aware of how those things are being edited and changed. Um, you know, we've seen committee whole meetings where we have five different minutes that we have to approve. I think if it's coming back with highlighting uh, amendments to it, then it's easy for us to notice those and just vote that through and feel confident with that change. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we need to be aware of all the changes, no matter no matter what, um, uh, and be highlighted. I, I think in the past there have been instances where things were changed and it was not minor, and uh, um, uh, that, uh, uh, like Councillor um, Palmer said, can kind of put a pan of legal worms. Councillor Stephen, your comment? No, thank you, Chair. All right, I give you any direction. Uh, yep. For sure. All right. So this is kind of the same thing with, uh, oh, nope, sorry, I missed one. Under bylaws, there is no specification in the procedure bylaw that allows corporate services to consolidate bylaws. It's not specifically written down. So typically what we do, if there's an amendment bylaw, we go in and we add all those amendments to the base bylaw. There is a clear note on the website that if you're accessing a consolidated bylaw to make sure you go into City Hall and you get a certified copy of the individual bylaw that you're talking about. It's not addressed in the procedure bylaw, should it be? Councilor Palmer? Uh, I don't think it's necessary to consolidate it and there's a qualifier. It is not a bylaw. It's a consolidated bylaw, but it is not a bylaw. Because you have to go back to the original. I think it's very clear on the consolidate. Every one, every one of our consolidated bylaws is very, very specific. And again, from a legal perspective, that's where it goes back to is the, the actual bylaws. I don't think it's an issue. I think it's it's fine if you need. Uh, I, I I don't see any problem. Like I don't think there's any prohibition of the consolidated bylaw as it is right now. You know, from a pr procedural thing, you can do do this. Mm -hmm. I think it's a staff function. Perspective. Any other comments? What is staff's recommendation? I don't think it needs to be in there either. Okay. okay. Um, the next one I'm probably just going to skip by because I believe that um, the making the minor fixes to bylaws would be you would have the same ideas with the minutes. Yeah. Bring them forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, addressing council at meetings. So right now we don't have a formal process to allow the public to address council at meetings. It could lengthen meetings. What do you, do you think that should be included? For example, there's someone sitting in the gallery that wants to make a comment. Um, so I, I want to weigh in because I, I, we've seen some changes within the CSRD and we actually allow a public question and answer period near the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have this process where we go, you know, Ms. Russo, do we have any questions from the press? Um, we could say, is there anyone in the public that would, has a question? And so how do you feel about that and how do we word that sort of thing? So we're not going down a rabbit hole that's going to keep us here for two hours on something that may not be applicable to what we just discussed in this room. So, Your Worship, the only problem I see there is if someone is watching online 
they do not have access to ask a question. Okay. And so, um, so Councilor Palmer, comment. Um, yeah, I have a, some thoughts on this. It's something I've looked at for many years, and uh, certainly my view today is significantly different from when it's on the bureaucratic side of the fence. Mm -hmm. um, the, I, I think it's a missing part in democracy of that ability for the public to interact at, at that level. For certainty, it does need some control. So uh, opening up to the floor during, a, uh, especially during debate and stuff, I think it's a very dangerous place to go and would uh, encourage that not to happen. Um, uh, the what what I've seen over the years is um, uh, sometimes there, of course we have our de our delegation uh, ability uh, and I think that's good I think that's underutilized I'd like to see that utilized more I think there's a bit of a problem though it being at the beginning of the meeting because it can tend to distract and it stretches out the length of the meeting I have seen this the, that same kind of thing so for example in Summerland they had at the end of the meeting that the public could address an item on the agenda, maximum two minutes, not 10 minutes. Um, the problem with that was that it's too late. Council's already made their decision and it's very frustrating. So there's this, okay, you can air a complaint for two minutes, but we've already decided what we're going to do. Uh, so how we create that opportunity for people to make meaningful comments in that short period of time from the agenda uh, uh, being published and allowing that opportunity without it derailing the, 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 the council proceedings. Um, so it, I don't know that I'll get addressed here. I'm just because you're asking the question. So yeah. the uh, in, in my mind, if there is after after the the um, uh, those procedural things, the bylaw adoption, the mayor's message, those key things, giving uh, uh, the, the public the opportunity to address an item on the agenda without grandstanding. So that's the challenge, though, that would be a big yeah. challenge for the chair. To me, that would, in the interests of democracy and, and openness, that would be better, but it's not, it's fraught with problems, I, I think, administratively. So I'm not really giving some guidance, but I think we are lacking in uh, providing those opportunities um, uh, to the public in, in that official way. Councilor Chair. Yeah, debate in here. Uh, I'm a fan of open debate and having community members weigh in. If they have the opportunity to bring any issue to council that we can bring to the table, um, we're all aware that there's certain members of our community that just engage in recreational outrage that you give them a microphone, they're gonna, we know, we've seen what happens, we've seen on public hearings, it's that. Uh, question is, would that potentially reopen the debate? Is there a chance for that? Um, if it's after the fact, I don't think so. It's after but, the fact that it would have to be in consideration. Yeah. And, and so there would be, you know, as Councilor Palmer has mentioned, it would be that frustration on more frustrating having it after the fact. I see what you're saying than that. Uh, I'm not seeing that in what we're doing in the CSRD, but we're not addressing what's necessarily uh, on the agenda today. But I'm hearing what you're saying with after the fact. Councilor Lucia. Um, thanks. Uh, I think it would be good to have. Um, a procedure and policy in place um, as we get out of COVID and people are wanting to interact face to face. I think it would have to be done here in person. I think it would be challenging to have people electronically part yeah. of the meeting. Um, I do echo what Councillor Palmer is saying is having it before we've made decisions will actually make the community members feel that they're being heard and instead of just complaining about their the vote not going their way. Um, I think if we had in the same way that we do public hearings that you have to sign up and there's a schedule and a lot of time frame that you're allowed to talk just to kind of rein these things in and then having you as the chair being able to cut their time short if they are grandstanding or being disruptive or to us. <laughs> okay. Sir. 
Uh, uh, yes, I do support uh, more participation. I think uh, we uh, would support democracy. I guess what I would want is a specific policy proposal from staff that takes into account all of the potential pitfalls, all of those considerations, and lays it out into a clear procedure that uh, accounts for the fact that um, a lot of times it's people coming because they're passionate about one particular topic of something and might be keyed up uh, and uh, not have experience with the meeting format. So it, it needs to take into all of those things into account. And also the concern that it would be uh, something that uh, people would grandstand and having gone through the um, uh, vacation rental zoning uh, hearings, um, way back in the day i mean that's a clear demonstration of how things just get off the, the get, off track. get off track real quick and uh, so we need to be mindful of all those things but yeah just if you know if, if the goal is somebody who's passionate about the community and really wants to talk to topic has their opportunity to come in and say something yeah, that's also sticking um yeah just to echo what's already been said i fully support like the public debate um i think the timing at the beginning of the meeting to me, I think it has more weight than having it at the end where, you know, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So let's think about that. For sure. Talk about yeah. that. And so anything else that you actually want to uh, get through before I- We just have two more little things and then it's the agenda structure. So if we okay. could just talk about, so a lot of communities um, have terms of reference for committee of the whole. We do not. Do you see value in it? How does it differ from council? Well, it's right now it doesn't really, other than it's more of an open dialogue, it's more discussion based, but that's not written down anywhere. Whereas every other committee of council has a terms of reference. So would this council feel comfortable in terms of reference similar to what we've got for a council meeting? Um, that's one yeah. Of the other. yeah, so yeah, definitely. Um, the, it's an in, interesting dialogue. And then uh, how we use the committee the whole over the last quite extensive period of time, um, last couple of terms, I would suggest, has been uh, kind of ad hoc and more influenced by uh, the administrator of the day and, uh, and where that's going. I know there was uh, going back to Alan Chabot's days. Uh, there was some structural changes of shifting from the committee structure to the committee of the whole structure um, and there's theory behind that but uh, the way right now is uh, is interesting because it's evolving with this council and with uh, mr parliament here it's evolving and he has ideas about that so i think i think it's a sort of a dialogue but there is ambiguity and in my mind a little bit of confusion of stuff that seems like should have been finance committee Right. Um, and then what you know what's going on committee of the whole why is it going there why is it not going directly to uh, uh, and, and, and the use of committees so I, I think it's a kind of a there's a bigger question but I, I, I really think that Mr. Parliament needs to be in that discussion um, as I see how that's evolved it seems apparent to me that he favors the committee of the whole uh, process so that there's a little bit more interaction uh, in a more comfortable setting. Um, so I think we need to understand that a little bit more. And then I'm certainly open to ideas from, that are coming from staff and then how we how we do that. Better clarity of what's going to the committees because that seems to be inconsistent. What reports are coming from staff from to committees, committee of the whole or to council meeting. Uh, uh, and that that's probably the biggest concern that I have is there's inconsistency on and on staff reports. Good. Any other comments from council? Councilor Lynn? I want to comment on the last item. Just, I just wanted to, two sentences, sorry. Uh, uh, libel and defamation, we need to be mindful of that in the public comment policy, whatever comes forward. Um, so for example, we had an issue many years ago where a former mayor was libeled and not happy because it wasn't immediately addressed at the uh, at the table. So just as the potential for a staff member to come in or a member of the public to come in and make statements that are libelous, uh, we need to address that because technically that's our responsibility. So just a quick right. yeah. yeah, yeah. point. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and then the last one, correspondence, I believe, will come in the form of a policy or procedure. I don't think it needs to be necessarily included that how it's going to be received and accepted. Mm -hmm. We do have a correspondence section in the agenda, but in terms of the details around that, we'll nail that down and how it's disseminated through the council. Okay. Sorry, no, sorry. Um, we do have a current policy that, like, we used to get all kinds of letters from like the National Association of Butterflies saying we want a council resolution. Those are not put forward to us now anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be like piles of those things. And, and the council will be talking about like, okay, well, the thing is about butterflies. <laughs> but there, yeah. there was a statement or there is a policy or something that we don't do proclamations. And I think yeah, that, that right. kind of covered yeah. that sort of stuff. So we're not dealing with that. So, um, so Someone. my question is, you guys, are you okay if, do you want a complete new council procedure bylaw, or do you want amendments to reflect what we talked about today? Mm -hmm. I think new would be cleaner. Okay. Um, sure. So my proposal is that in June, I come forward with a draft based on today's discussions. And at that time, we can go through the agenda structure and nail that down as well. So we don't need to continue this conversation too many times. All right, let's do that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I need someone to make a motion to terminate. Councilor Stephen is seconded by Councilor Orlando. All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Russo. We are done for the day.